This hearing is hereby called to order. With the presence of the Senate President and uh, <coughs> Senator Francis Tol Tolentino, the Chair hereby declares the presence of the quorum. The Chair has an opening statement. But before that, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons. We have here <coughs> Under Secretary Ricardo Halad, the Administrator of the Office of Civil Defense. Good morning, sir. Um, DBM represented by Director Ria de la Vega. Is it okay? Ah, Doctor or Director Cleotilde Laxamana Drapete. Good morning, ma'am. The, the uh, or Administrator of his, of course, nandito na. Together with Attorney Christopher James Purishima, Deputy Administrator, you're here. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Secretary. Eduardo De Lusario, the Chair of Housing and Urban Development Coordinating Council, and the ano, presumptive Department Secretary. <laughs> and uh, my, my former Undersecretary at the uh, Presidential uh, Office of the Presidential Assistant for Rehabilitation and Recovery, uh, Dr. Ba, Danilo Antonio, Professor Danilo Antonio, also President of uh, Land Excel Consulting Incorporated. So, para makuha natin yung views niya. So, okay. The World Economic Forum conducted in Geneva, Switzerland in 2017 identified both natural and man-made disasters as among the top global risks that can cause significant negative impact on several countries and industries within the next 10 years. But Long before this risk has been widely talked about in international fora, disasters have unfortunately become a frequent life experience in the Philippines. And our recent history attests to this untoward reality. Just last Friday, November 8, we commemorated the sixth year anniversary when Category 5 Typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan <coughs> cut a swath of unprecedented destruction across 171 cities and municipalities in Central Philippines. In the same breath, we are one with our brothers and sisters in Mindanao as they continue to heal from the scars caused by, Sambuanga, by the Sambuanga siege in 2013 and the Marawi crisis in 2017. In between, various parts of the country are being shaken quite literally by earthquakes and numerous aftershocks, most recent of which were the three strong quakes that hit the island of Mindanao in the past weeks affecting 146,000 Filipinos, most of whom are still living in tents as we speak. <clears throat> the cycle goes, the country has barely recovered from one disaster, but here we are again, already taking a heavy beating from another. Five years after the Repub Republic, or after Republic Act 10121, otherwise known as the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act of 2010 was enacted, a special report prepared by the Commission on Audit in 2015 tells us that, and I quote, the government's response and recovery efforts in Yolanda ravaged areas already showed that, it's implement that the implementation of RA10121 still leaves a lot to be desired. The recorded below par performance was primarily attributed to the multi-sectoral, multi-organizational structure of the National Disaster and Risk Reduction Management Council, or NDRMC. As former Presidential Assistant for Rehabilitation and Recovery in Typhoon Yolanda, I say without reservation that COA's report cannot be any more truthful. Experience tells us that creating a task force or an ad hoc body every time a disaster strikes is deemed ineffective and inefficient, especially now that scientists postulate that we are entering a time of climatic uncertainty, also tagged as the new normal. Hence, after my stint as PAR, among my priority recommendations was to strengthen the Office of Civil Defense, to give it the necessary authority and wherewithal to fulfill the promises of RA10121. This representation filed a resolution during the 17th Congress that called for the Oversight Committee to convene in order to conduct the long overdue sunset 
Review of Republic Act 10121, otherwise known as the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction Management Act of 2010, which could have been accomplished as early as 2015, as called for under Section 27 of the said Act, which states, and I quote, Section 27, Sunset Review, within five years after the effectivity of this Act, or as the need arises, the Congressional Oversight Committee shall conduct a sunset review. For purposes of this Act, the term sunset review shall mean a systematic evaluation by the Congressional Oversight Committee of the accomplishments and impact of this Act, as well as the performance and organizational structure of its implementing agencies for purposes of determining remedial legislation. Unfortunately, having been overtaken by events, the proposal hurdled in the past Congress legislative agenda. Having said all that, we must not forget that His Excellency President Rodrigo Roa Duterte on July 24, 2017 and July 22, 2019, State of the Nation addresses emphasized the need for Congress to enact legislation to right-size the national government. Thus, in his second SONA, last July 24, 2017, he said, and I quote, we will right-size the national government. Let us trim the excess fat and add more muscle to the expeditious passage of the act right, right-sizing the national government to improve public service institute. And then again, during his fourth SONA, on July 22, 2019, he said, and I quote again, I urge Congress to review and pass the government right-sizing bill to reconfigure the existing Metro Manila-centric bureaucracy, streamline government systems in order to deliver services without delay and within a short timeline. Now, this puts us in a dilemma. As a matter of policy direction, do we create another department that will further bloat an already bloated bureaucracy or simply make do with a council that called or called NDRMC that has no focus and responsibility to address natural and man-made calamities that have become permanent and frequent in a country such as ours, which is located along the boundary of major tectonic plates and at the center of a typhoon belt coupled by its socially and economically vulnerable population. In fact, the Philippines is one of the world's most disaster-prone countries. I need not emphasize that the members of this committee are representatives of the Filipino people. Hence, we are here to listen to all the discussions and arguments and decide what we deem is beneficial to the people that we all serve. At this point, I welcome our resource persons, well, of course, I've already acknowledged your presence. Uh, our aim in this committee hearing is to deliberate on the legislative proposals manifested through 11 Senate bills and two privileged speeches, which include the creation of an independent DRRM department, expansion on the scope of local DRRM fund, and mandatory civil conscription for disaster and humanitarian, humanitarian services, among others. Somebody once said that an apparent significant issue ignored today can spawn tomorrow's catastrophes. We have had our share of catastrophes and it is only a matter of time until the next one. Let this public hearing be guided by our learnings from the past as we pursue our overall goal of having safer, adaptive, and disaster-resilient Filipino communities towards sustainable development. Before we proceed, if any of our guests uh, or resource persons would like to make uh, their uh, statements, you are welcome to do so. So, unless, of course, ah, the chair welcomes uh, or acknowledges the presence of uh, Senator Bato, another author of uh, one of the 11 bills. So. But the Vice Chairman would like to, if you would like to make a, uh, a statement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, we concur with the statements made uh, earlier by our chair, Chairman and uh, likewise acknowledge the dilemma 
opposed by the current efforts to right size the bureaucracy vis-a-vis -vis the various plans to set up a Department of Disaster Management or Department of Disaster Resilience, whatever the nomenclature as passed by the lower house. We, we acknowledge likewise the current situation wherein uh, our country has, has yet to formulate the exact parameters on how to respond to a calamity vis-a-vis -vis our uh, economic, social, and other situations. So the, the chairman is correct in uh, addressing these challenges as we, as we celebrate the ninth year of the crafting of Republic Act 10121, the, the law cre uh, passed last 2000, 2010. Uh, 2009, uh, uh, Your Honor, July 2009, if I may, uh, the, the 14th Congress. So this, this venue right now is, a, is an effort to address the current needs. We had a swarm of earthquakes a few weeks ago, and all the personalities present here are aware of the situation. We just commemorated an anniversary of Yolanda, uh, my, my good friend, General Del Rosario, uh, we were there, General Harad, Halad, we were there in Ompong, together in Ompong, as well as the other calamities that this nation confronted. And this representation, modestly aside, witnessed several of the calamities from the earthquake in La Libertad, Negros Oriental, to the various other uh, uh, disasters confronted by the nation. But just to cite, Mr. Chair, a... a a quote from a, an, an academe, uh, disasters challenge efforts to reduce poverty. Kahit anong pong gawin natin, uh, kahit anong dagdag natin sa budget, kahit anong dagdag natin sa pagtulong sa ating mga kababayan, kung tatamaan at tatamaan po sila ng malakas na lindol o bagyo, balik na naman po sa dating sitwasyon o bas, baka mas mababa pa. They can force the near poor temporarily below the poverty line and contribute to more persistent chronic poverty. Sa loob po ng halos sampung taon, wala po akong nakita na programa ang ating NDREMC o CD, wag po kayong magagalit, na konektado po sa poverty reduction. Pagkatapos ng isang malakas na kalamidad na tatama, halimbawa po yung tumama sa makilala, yung lindol, sa magsaysay, Dabo del Sur, wala po akong nakita ang ganong programa. Wala po akong nakita ang programa para sa mabilis na rehabilitasyon. Aasa po tayo sa National Housing Authority, kung hindi po dumating yung Zuchi si, uh, sa Tacloba, na hindi po mapapabilis ang pagbangon ng mga kababayan nating mga waray. At ganun din po sa iba't ibang lugar. Ang tinatalakay po natin ngayon, Mr. Chair, ay papaano po maaayos yung Republic Act 10121 na magkaroon ng isang kagawaran na mas mabilis pong re-responde. Sinabi ko po doon sa privilege speech ko, Mr. Chair, sa aking pagkakaalam, tatlo lamang pong rehiyon ang napaghandaan na magkaroon ng isang mabilis na pagtugon. Kung tama po yung aking pagkakaalam. National Capital Region, Region 3, and Region 4A. Paano na po yung iba? Paano na po yung Sambuanga Peninsula? Paano po yung Visayas? Paano po yung Region 5? Nandun po tayo, General Halad, nung pumutok yung Bulkang Mayon. Tama po si uh, Senator Lacson. Tama na po yung ad hoc. Ako po, puro ad hoc po ako. Ad hoc lang po ako doon sa, sa Bulkang Mayon. Malaking tulong po sa atin ng OCD, ng Philippine National Police, ng Armed Forces of the Philippines. Pero hindi po sustainable yung ad hoc. Hindi po, uh, hindi po tama na yung pagtugo natin na iaasa na lang natin sa, sa, ilang, uh, sa ilang private organizations, sa ilang uh, mga volunteers, Dapat po siguro merong permanenting tugon, predictable, maaasahan, may pondo, at aasahan din po ng ating mga kababayan at accountable. Yun lamang po, uh, Mr. Chair, and we, we expect a, a robust discussion concerning the various bills filed uh, in this chamber. Maraming salamat po at maganda umaga. Thank you. The Senate President, the author of Senate Bill 211, may also want to... 211? 211? Oh, two four. Two four five. Mr. Senate President. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, 
uh, I am actually here to listen, even if I am one of the authors of one of the bills. <coughs> I'm sure the resource persons <coughs> are very much aware of uh, the contents of the different, uh, the, I hope you have browsed through the different bills. No? Um, uh, Senate Bill 245 practically wishes to uh, integrate risk reduction and management and climate change adaptation. Perhaps uh, the other bills are the same. So um, allow me to just uh, thank and commend the chairman of the Committee on, on Defense and Security for calling the hearing swiftly and listen to the different sides of this uh, creation. Again, uh, we, it is also um, um, perhaps uh, timely to look into the possibility of um, the problem on right sizing. But uh, if we are merely going to, to um, uh, absorb and put uh, all the, the risk reduction councils together, perhaps uh, we can reach a consensus on this. So again, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you, and um, we are here to listen. Thank you, Mr. Senate President. Uh, the first question is, you know, we'd like to get your views on this. You know, do we need a department, a separate department, to address natural uh, disasters, even man-made uh, disasters? And the next question would be addressed to the natural objector, to, this, uh, to, to the measures under consideration, the DBM. Can we afford it? So, doon na lang muna tayo umikot in the meantime. So, Secretary De Lusario and Jose Halad, do we need a department to address uh, calamities, whether man-made or natural? Yes, uh, Jose Halad first. Sir, so having a department uh, with all the functions uh, regarding uh, disaster risk reduction and management, specifically prevention and mitigation, preparedness, uh, response and rehabilitation recovery. Uh, place all those functions in one department is uh, very overwhelming. Uh, what I saw in the uh, different models that I observed, even in advanced countries, they don't have a sort of a national disaster risk reduction and management <laughs> department or agency. What they have are emergency management agency because it is in the function of uh, emergency management wherein we have the urgency to consolidate all the efforts regarding emergency management uh, of the different governments. So the question is, do we need a department for disaster risk reduction management? Again, said that's uh, very overwhelming. Uh, we might have problem with the capacity of the department to function. All those uh, responsibilities across all the thematic areas of disaster risk reduction and management. So the central body that uh, will be created for emergency management may not be a department. It, it may be a, an authority uh, outside uh, of any of the control of the control of any of the existing departments, it can be placed under directly under the office of the president. Right now, what are the defects or ano yung problems being countered by OCD uh, under the present setup? Because the OCD, effectively, you are are you the executive director of NDRMC? Yun di ba yung other function? My primary function is uh, administrator of the Office of Civil Defense. Yeah? And uh, I have another hat, and that is uh, executive director of the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council. So, so what are the problems that you encounter or you're encountering? You know? Every time there's a disaster, of course, every day naman, halos may disaster. Eh? And uh, every day you're activated. So what are the problems that you encounter under the present setup para lang mahimay natin itong, uh, itong mga bills or itong mga measures uh, under consideration? Yes, sir. Since uh, we uh, adhere mainly to the 
interagency and multi-stakeholder approach. Uh, the main uh, challenge really is uh, interagency coordination uh, because uh, different responsibilities uh, related to disaster risk reduction and management are large in, so, in the so many uh, departments of the government. I could also be a resource person here because I encountered the same problem when I was uh, appointed uh, presidential assistant at uh, Yolanda, but uh, I deemed it wise to, in, to invite my former USEC, whom I uh, plucked out uh, of the academia right? and the private sector, was the urban uh, developer, si Yosek, dating Yosek Antonio. And sa kanya na lang manggaling kung ano yung mga problema rami na encounter. So I remember during, uh, during that time, I even expressed uh, disappointment uh, with the non-cooperation of uh, two or three cabinet secretaries. But by and large, when we called for hearings or meetings, discussions, uh, most, if not all, the cabinet secretaries were present, no? even um, especially uh, after I uh, expressed that, uh, that frustration. No? After that, very smooth. And uh, whenever we call for hearings or meetings, nandiyan sila to, uh, to cooperate. So, Yusek, Antonio, can you share your views? Yung experience natin on? Yeah. Uh, good morning to everybody, and thank you very much for inviting me uh, to maybe participate in this hearing and at least come up with some of my comments and insights on what happened to us when we were uh, doing the Yolanda recovery. Uh, the main disappointment is really precisely the structure of the, the response, no? Uh, because uh, coordination has to be done with so many bodies, uh, with so many cabinet secretaries. Uh, getting them present was already a challenge and getting them to cooperate even more and passing the particular responsibility of cooperation among their underlings is another challenge, no? So taken together, that really... Uh, delayed the entire process of uh, responding to the crisis. In fact, when we got set up, we even had to participate on the response side when we would have, we should have concentrated on the rehab function. So uh, having a um, centralized body, maybe more power to, to, an, or to OCD uh, would, would, would be uh, really very more beneficial and more effective and efficient no? because uh, it allows this particular uh, unit uh, to carry on the necessary task of, uh, of uh, immediately coming up with the various rehabilitation uh, uh, strategies. No? So, in fact, we had more success with the non-government sector at that time, with the private sector, precisely because this organization at that time, with their willingness to cooperate, were able to... Uh, uh, at least coordinate uh, their respective organizations to produce the necessary results. No? So uh, learning from that, uh, that means if we only have uh, a proper set up uh, organized with the uh, proper well, authorities and budgets, then uh, things could move faster. Of course, we realize uh, creating this particular new bureaucracy with all of the, the necessary uh, staff uh, might be budget-wise uh, a little tough. But given the uh, context that the Philippines is really right there in the disaster-prone disaster areas, we're talking about uh, natural disasters. No? Of course, uh, this is uh, further worsened by man-made disasters that happen every now and then. Okay? If we are already uh, uh, agreed to the fact that uh, disasters will hit us, every so often, every year. So many typhoons every year. Now we're worried about uh, earthquakes. Then uh, it's best that we organize ourselves properly with a single entity that be able to address disaster prepared preparedness in a more organized way so that the responses will go uh, also even faster. And most important, it's the other, other uh, activities already. Uh, it's the rehabilitation portion and ultimately the recovery. No? We notice we've already gone through a lot of disasters where the responses have been there, but uh, everything is one thing when it comes to already the rehab function. 
and ultimately the recovery function. The recovery function is totally forgotten. No? So uh, this is one major area that needs to be addressed uh, if we're talking about uh, improving poverty and everything. When the disaster strikes, poverty becomes even worse in the disaster hit areas. And so far, the relevant agencies are just concentrating, number one, to a certain degree on preparedness, and number two, to response. But after the response side has happened, rehabilitation and recovery takes a back seat. And in fact, a lot of the disaster hit areas up to now still wanting on how the rehab and the recovery process would be. So having a, a better organized and more effective bureaucracy with more power to handle this uh, would really serve the purpose. Thank you, Thank you sir. Uh, Mr. Antonio. Uh, the Chair acknowledges the presence of uh, the Majority Leader, the Singish Majority Leader, um, Senator Mick Subiri, who delivered a privileged speech, a very forceful privileged speech uh, that triggered this hearing today. No. So, Secretary Del Rosario, your, your views? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Honorable Committee Chair, uh, Senator Pan Pilul Lacson, uh, Honorable Senate President Big Soto, Honorable Senator Francis Tolentino, Senator Ronald uh, De La Rosa, Honorable, Honorable uh, Miguel uh, Sabiri, uh, my co-resource uh, persons, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Sir, I, I can see as the former administrator of the Office of Civil Defense, I can see that the, uh, the OCD, although it is mandated to undertake disaster as the, uh, uh, to implement actually the Republic Act uh, 10121, uh, in terms of the four thematic areas, uh, preparation, prevention, mitigation, response, and uh, rehab. Uh, but still, the primary uh, departments uh, responsible for the, let's say, for the preparation would be the Department of Interior and Local Government, simply because they are uh, there right into the localities up to the barangay level. So the mandate for the preparation is given to the DILG. In as far as uh, prevention and mitigation, it's uh, science-based, so it's given to DOST. And I think the OCD will be more, uh, uh, have more direct participation in the response and the rehabilitation aspect. I think this is the, the focus that uh, we need to reinforce, as well as, of course, the risk reduction, which is very, very important. Uh, if we have to, uh, to create a new department, still, it could not address the uh, preparation and the uh, mitigation because it is being undertaken by other departments. So I think what we need is really to, to uh, reinforce the uh, Office of Civil Defense so that it can be more uh, adapted to response and the rehabilitation aspect given the budget that would uh, uh, capacitate, capacitate the office to implement the rehabilitation projects. Uh, at, at the moment, when I was the uh, administrator, we only have 300 people. Now they have 600 covering the whole country with only uh, 18 to 20 people per region. If the Office of Civil Defense can have a strong presence so that they can participate in the uh, uh, prevention, uh, preparation in tandem with relevant agencies, their presence should be at least up to the provincial level. So if, if the strength, the present strength of the Office of Civil Defense can be uh, 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 enhanced, uh, may, make it uh, more uh, relevant in the implementation of its job, I think that would be a very uh, significant uh, uh, step so that we can uh, make the Office of Civil Defense uh, uh, work better. In the, uh, in the response and rehabilitation, if we have the Office of Civil Defense, uh, let's say in the rehabilitation aspect. In my experience, as the task force uh, uh, Marawi, in the rehabilitation of Marawi, still all the departments are the ones implementing. Uh, we, we stated that we need this budget, but the task force uh, does not get any amount of the uh, proposed budget, but instead given to the different departments. Now, if you would like to really pass track any rehabilitation in any area, it should be given to the, if we have the Office of Civil Defense, give it to the Office of Civil Defense and now directly control the implementation of the rehabilitation, not being given 
to every department implementing this. There is no synchronization anymore. So the task force integrates, but it cannot uh, implement. It simply integrates, and the integration is quite hard if you don't have the uh, the money to implement the project and still being given to the 56 departments implementing the rehabilitation. So there is no synchronization. Others may be passing their uh, bidding process. Others may be slow. So it's really a, a big problem if the budget, the budget is given and centralized to uh, and being accessed by all the you departments. Yes, sir, yes, sir. with the permission of the chair. Chair Tortolintino and then uh, the majority leader. Ang ibig sabihin niyo po ngayon, hindi sa pananaw niyo, hindi tama yung pagtatag ng bagong kagawaran dahil uh, ang kailangan lang palakasin yung OCD. But given your new role, nabanggit ni Senator Laxon kanina as presumptive Secretary of the Department of Human Settlements and Housing. So ano na, lahat po kasi ng tinan to, uh, General Del Rosario, lahat ng ating kalamidad, bagyo, lindol, kahit man-made, pagkatapos ang pagpinag-usapan ng rehabilitation, ang pupuntahan po natin, housing. Saan ililikas, saan magkakaroon ng permanenteng pamayanan, sino ang magtatayo ng bahay, magkano ang bahay, sino ang recipients. Given your new role as the presumptive ang sinabi ni Senator Laxon, our chair, ano po ang magagawa ng, uh, ng bagong tatag na kagawaran ng pabahay na hindi man lang kasama pa dito ngayon sa ating Republic Act 10121 sa struktura ng ating rehabilitasyon? Ano magagawa ng National Housing Authority under your turf kung sakaling hindi natin itatatag itong uh, Department of uh, Disaster Management. At kung itatatag man ito, ano magiging role po nito? Ibibigay ba natin sa kanila yung, uh, yung mandato na magtayo ng, uh, ng pabahay sa mga naapektuhan ng, ng kalamidad? Isa po yun. Pangalawang tanong ko, Secretary. At ito'y gusto kong tanungin, uh, Mr. Chair, pagdating po ng budget deliberations. Meron po tayong, meron po tayong isang opisina. Ang tawag po doon ay uh, uh, Philippine Philippine Volunteers Office. Kung ano man ang tawag. Ngayon ko lang narinig to, Hindi ko masyado. Tinatagpo ito noong 2006. Narinig nyo na pa buho ito, Secretary. Tumulong na ba ito sa NDREAMC, sa OCD, yung mga volunteers natin. So dalawa po yan. Unahin nyo po yung nauna. Maraming salamat, Mr. Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor. Sir, I would like to uh, since it was mentioned by uh, Senator Tolentino. With regards to the earthquake that happened in uh, Mindanao, if you will notice, there were about more than 33,000 uh, damaged uh, houses. And most of these houses were damaged, damaged were located in remote rural areas, not in the town center, simply because they were constructed without building permit. It is substandard. And just the uh, ordinary uh, carpenter will just build their houses made of concrete. So when I went there, the walls of these uh, houses simply bended. And I saw that the, uh, the steel, uh, the gap is so big, and the size of the uh, steel used was very small. So if only the, uh, the, bu the, the building, uh, National Building Code, or there was a uh, building permit, if this was observed, I think it will not reach 33,000. In the town centers with building permit, uh, very few ang affected uh, buildings and structures. But go there in remote barangays. I went to the boundary of Tulunan, uh, one of the barangays, and Magsaysay in Davao del Sur. Andun, sir, yung mga damages. Dahil wala ang building permit, there is no enforcement of building permit. Kung kinustract lang ito ng in accordance with the building code, Palagay ko, sir, baka ma-reduce tayo bagay 70 to 80 percent yung total damages, not 33,000. Uh, ang, ang depekto natin, sir, is kwari, ado sa, sa preparation and prevention mitigation. Kaya tuloy, naapektuhan yung ating uh, response and rehab dahil very weak ang uh, prevention and mitigation. Doon, sir, tayo mag-concentrate. Yeah, to answer my question. So with regards to the uh, department's uh, accessing funds, uh, anong nangyayari sir ngayon sa present setup, uh, nakalads pa rin sa DBM or sa Office of the President 
na and access by different agencies is towards the DBM. Napakarami sir uh, mga uh, mga requirements na dapat na gawin ng mga implementing agencies. Kung sabi ko, uh, we have determined already based on the uh, post disaster need assessment, we need this much. If only this amount can be given to the Office of Civil Defense and Office of Civil Defense will now orchestrate the implementation of the projects in response or in the rehabilitation of those affected areas. So, if it is the Office of Civil Defense as the rightful agency uh, responsible in the response and the uh, rehabilitation, and together, the coordination is easier because the budget is there already, and all we have to do is to directly coordinate with the Office of Civil Defense, not to the Office of the President through the DBM. Yun lang, sir, ang nakikita kung kwan. Uh, I think this was experienced by uh, Senator Laxon where he was the head of the task force, Yolanda. Na, napakahirap talaga, sir, ng uh, kwan, access ng pondo. Until now, nahihirapan kami pati pag-access ng pondo. Mr. Chairman. Um, the yeah, majority yeah. leader. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, with all due respect to Secretary, uh, kaya nga nagkakaproblema dahil nagtuturuan kayo kung sino may kasalanan. There, you are, in such a large organization such as the NDRRMC, nagtuturuan kayo kung sino may kasalanan, kaya hindi natatapos yung project. For example, if I ask you now, why Marawi has not yet been rehabilitated? Of course, that's a long story. But I can answer, na, sir, uh, Mr. Senator. Quickly, quickly, ah. Chairman. If you, uh, it's because, example, sir, the, That's a man-made uh, calamity. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, the rehabilitation of uh, Marawi is quite uh, different. Uh, in all disaster uh, scenario, we we undertake early uh, uh, early uh, rehabilitation activities, uh, relief, uh, rescue, and uh, we provide for immediate needs of the people. And per doctrinal standard by UN, it takes about six months to one year. So we take away already one year in the actual rehabilitation. So while this is ongoing, we undertake the procurement process. That's why at the end of one year, we had a groundbreaking already in the most affected area for the start of the rehabilitation. But remember, sir, in the most affected area, we have a very big problem there. And that is the safety because of the presence of 70 powerful bombs in the most affected area. Okay. And these bombs, it, it's so hard to detect because it's embedded 10 to 15 meters below under the ground delivered by the Air Force. We must ensure that these bombs will be... Uh, neutralize first before we can start with actual yes, but, uh, rehabilitation. Secretary. And we are done already, uh, Mr. Senator, October 31 of this year, yes. since we started the uh, removal or detection and neutralization oh, of Mr. those Chairman. bombs. Oh, Mr. Chairman, uh, my point, that's for another hearing, that's for another topic. The Chairman of the uh, Marawi Rehab uh, Committee is here, Senator Bato de la Rosa, and I'll be asking you several questions on that because uh, the delay of the Marawi rehab, which is a man-made uh, calamity, is uh, fuel, fueling more fire to our, our anti-insurgency campaign and anti-extremist uh, campaign. Anyway, um, one of the reasons why itinalaga po namin ang inyong departamento, which is the Department of Housing, which you are now the acting secretary, um, the presumptive secretary, is because Really, there was no coordination in housing. There was a blame game again. Who's sino may kasalanan and NHA. There were several different uh, agencies handling it. And then there was no one go-to person. Usually, before, it used to be the vice president. And it was appointed. They would appoint. They appointed you as head of the HADC. But at the end of the day, uh, naka ilang budget hearing na ako. Siguro naka 16 budget hearings. In the 16 budget hearings, nagtuturuan sila eh, mabagal yung procurement ng lupa, mabagal yung implementation ng, ng ano, kulang ng budget. So we got sick and tired of that. And last Congress, the 17th Congress, to Senator J.V. Ercito, together with my colleagues, we passed the, finally the Department of, of uh, Housing. Now there is one, one single agency that is tasked for housing uh, our people. At the same time, one responsible agency for it. The buck stops with you. Ika nga. Dito naman sa disaster resilience, the reason why I bring, bring this up is the same problem. 
when we passed the NDRRMC, uh, maybe uh, close to 10 years ago, um, the idea was to have a coordinating council with all agencies involved. And the problem, Secretary, again, the blame game continues. Uh, in Mindanao, the Mindanao earthquake, nanguuna yung nauna po kami, Red Cross, kasi vice chairman ako na Red Cross, which is fine, but our resources are limited, sir. We are we have finite resources because we only live on donations. And of course, the military came in, which we were very happy, very proud of our men in uniform. They came in to help in the assistance and relief operations, of course, DSWD. But along the way, nakakaroon ng turuan um, on relief efforts, on rescue efforts. And then finally, as you mentioned earlier, nakakaturuan kung sino ba nag-implement ng building code. That's correct, sir. You're, you're correct in pointing out that if they follow the building code, hanggang magnitude 8, kaya yan. Supposed to be. Kung malaking kabilya, tama yung pagmiskla ng semento. Ang problema, we notice every time, ang nakakahiya pa, for example, 1,000 classroom buildings, punyemas. Imagine, it's the government project pa violating the building code. So, my, po my point there is, wouldn't the Department of Disaster Resilience be on top of that and maybe file the necessary charges to the government agency who's not implementing the building code? Uh, case in point, that's why we filed the anti, that's why we passed the Ease of Doing Business Act and we had to create another agency because the Civil Service Commission, initially that was the law of our chairman, uh, Senator Laxon, together with Senator J um, Joel Villanueva. Um, but after 14 years of implementation, walang natatakot, lalong bumaba tayo sa ease of doing business. So we had to create a new law with an ARTA, Anti-Red Tape Authority, headed now by Jeremiah Belgica, who is tasked to go after all of the government agencies who do not implement the law. In other words, the buck will stop with him. Pag hindi tumaas ang ating ranking sa ease of doing business, siya may kasalanan yan dahil hindi siya gumagalaw. So, case in point again here in uh, disaster resilience. After many years of passing the NDRRMC Secretary, Mr. Chairman, nakikita po natin the same thing goes on and on. Post, rehab, um, uh, yung disaster mitigation, hindi na implement With all due respect to the OCD, is because it's an office. Nakikinig ba yung head ninyo? Nakikinig ba mga sekretary sa inyo? Hindi. Hindi. Totoo lang. May cabinet level position ba sila? Hindi. Nakiki Napapakinggan ba sila sa kabinete? Hindi. Kaya kayo po sekretary, ginawa namin departamento para nandun po kayo sa kabinete palagi because hindi automatic na yung HADSI iniimbita ng gobyerno sa cabinet meetings. Totoo po. So yan po yan. That's why we're putting importance in this. We do not want to pass another law like the NDRRMC and then after 10 years, we have to retrofit it again. We have to come up with something out of the box, a drastic measure. And by the way, Mr. Chairman, this was mentioned by the President in his State of the Nation address as a priority measure. Nandito po yung PLLO kanina, nakita ko, under Secretary uh, from uh, Kamigin before, Governor of Kamigin. That is, was the three departments that the President mentioned was the Department of Water, the Department of Disaster Resilience, and I believe the other one was the Department of OFWs. Tatlo yun. So is your position, Secretary, contrary to the President's wish to uh, pass a Department of Resilience? That's my first question, and you can comment on the others that I mentioned, Secretary. Yeah, please. Uh, please uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Your Honors. Uh, uh, as I have uh, stated earlier, uh, it may be called a uh, department, but it, the Cib Office of Civil Defense can be uh, transformed into a, a department. And in that way, it will be uh, led by a cabinet secretary level and uh, the, the head sits during cabinet meetings. So that, is, that would uh, uh, actually uh, uh, make, it, make the organization faster. And the OCD will now be moved out of the uh, national uh, defense. I, I dissect natin a little further, no? yung nag exist ngayon na problema. Okay, for e every reconstruction and rehabilitation effort or efforts, ano, would entail 
funds, availability and proper dispersal ng pondo. For 2019, year in and year out, meron naman talagang nakalagak na, say in 2019, meron 20 billion. 2020, uh, proposed uh, appropriations, uh, proposed budget, another 20 billion. Pero nakalagay ito under NDRRMF na nasa special purpose fund na ang nag-handle DBM. Now, let's trace kung paano yung flow of funds. Ano? Halimbawa, merong calamity. DBM would wait for NDRRMC to submit whatever requirements or uh, budgetary requirements ang kailangan. But before that, they rely on OCD para maggawa muna ng tinatawag na PDNA, hindi ba? Yun ang immediate eh, post-disaster needs assessment. And it takes a while. And then NDRMC as a council would meet and imagine the difficulty of assembling or, you know, gathering all the department secretaries to talk about or dis to discuss ano ba extent and damage, magkano kailangan in, in this area, in this area, in this area. So ang tagal ng proseso. And hindi naman sa pagano, but I would like to correct the impression of the distinguished majority leader na ang mali hindi sa pagtuturuan kundi yung structure Kasi imagine all cabinet secretaries involved and practically all cabinet secretaries are involved. DPWH, DOST, of course there are two chairpersons, ano? DND, SND, and SILG. Sila yung chair and co-chair. But even then, bago makapagpulong at pag-usapan, ano yung kailangan para i-address yung halimbawa lindol sa Makilala or sa Cotabato or sa, sa Davao? Medyo matagal. And Siyempre, yung takbo ng papel, magre-request pa ng pondo, including all justification. Tama ba yun na DBM? Ganun yung flow. Eh. And then, uh, nasa authority nyo na ba to release the fund to the uh, concerned agencies? Not necessarily to the NDRMC, di ba? Because nakalagay na doon kung ano yung department na nangangailangan ng kung magkano. Say, DPWH would need uh, a few billions to reconstruct. Maybe uh, HADSI or now yung uh, department being uh, headed by Secretary Rosario, kailangan this amount to address the housing uh, problem or yung, uh, yung nasira mga bahay and so forth and so on. So medyo matagal. So if we integrate all these efforts under one body, you know, whether it's the department or an agency, an authority under the Office of the President, at least bibilis yung, uh, yung kilos, pati yung uh, pag-assess, lahat. So is that a correct ob observation? M my question uh, now is, on the average, ano ba yung number of typhoons that hit the country for the past 10 years? How many? Meron kayo niyan? Uh, I think I can remember uh, what Pagasa mentioned that we have an average of 20 typhoons every 20 year. 20 typhoons a year, no? yes, depending yes. na lang sa, yes, sa yes. lakas. No? Yeah. But uh, yes, all, there are always damaging uh, typhoons in uh, four to five uh, typhoon, uh, damaging typhoons in, uh, on the average. Out of the 20, ilan yung talagang destructive? Well, uh, on the average usually four to five, but uh, this year, sir, uh, it's not only typhoons that, uh, like for example. No, uh, typhoon lang muna. Wag na muna yung Marawi, kasi kung bagas ano, mga special events yun eh. Uh, on so the average, uh, pa lang, likewise, uh, four to five, but uh, for this year, we, that's, we did not see that uh, average, sir. Ang next question is, on the average, magkano yung cost ng damage? Um... For the past 10 years? Uh, we, will we will have to go back to our... Uh, Sige nga, para lang may estimate natin kung yeah. tama ba yung nilalagak do sa NDRRMF na 20 billion kasi at least for 2019 and 2020, meron 20 billion dyan. But it is under its lump sum, of course, because we cannot predict how much would be needed in a particular fiscal year. So naglalagay tayo na ng 20 billion, uh, hindi pa alam kung saan gagamitin. So DBM... Uh, do sa mga releases ninyo, say, past five years na lang, magkano yung actually na nare-release ninyo sa mga agencies uh, involved in uh, reconstruction and rehabilitation? Including, of course, yung emergency 
response kasi sa inyo rin ang gagaling yan. Uh, sir, uh, by the way, before we proceed, before you uh, respond, the chair acknowledges the presence of the one of the authors, ano? Parin si uh, Senator uh, Bongo. Go ahead, please. Good morning. I have the uh, data for 2018 to 2019. Uh, for 2018, uh, we have the con uh, continuing approval for uh, 5 billion, sir. So, dun po sa, sa funds natin na 19 billion for uh, 2018, 5 billion, 5 billion po ang natira. So, for 2019... Of how much? 19.6 billion. 19.6 billion. Ang naiwan sa inyo, 5 billion. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, dun po sa 5 billion na yun, uh, uh, more on marawi recovery po ang natira, sir. Uh, then for 2020, meron po tayong 20 2019 muna. 2018 20, itong sorry, 5 billion na iwan. Yes, sir. So 20, uh, 2019. Uh, sir, for 2020, ay 2019, we have 20 billion and uh, as of date, uh, as of October 31, 2019, uh, we have... Uh, the ba a balance of 8.8 .8 billion, sir. Yung requirement, magkano pa? Kung may balance kayo, so yung 5 billion na balik na sa treasury yun as savings? Hindi, sir. Uh, may mga chargeable pa po doon ngayon, sir. Ah, so obligated. Um, uh, hindi pa lang naka-disperse, hindi pa lang na-release, pero may mga may, meron, obligations kayo. Yes, sir. Tsaka meron po uh, for OP approval din, sir. For? OP approval, sir. Uh, pending approval ng Office of the President. Yes, sir. Magkano yun? Uh, 3.5 billion, sir. 3.5? Yes, sir. Pero hindi nyo pa nare-release? Uh, hindi pa, sir. Uh, yun. So, yung flow nga, uh, sundan mo nga yung sinabi ko kanina, kung tama yung flow ng uh, disbursement ng pondo, you will have to wait for NDRMC, di ba? To make sir, a request. Uh, sir, upon uh, evaluation of OCD and NDRMC, uh, if the fund, uh, it will be passed to o for OP approval, then upon OP approval, the agencies will request from the uh, Department of Budget and Management. And the uh, bureaus uh, handling the departments will evaluate the completeness of the request. Then uh, it will be uh, a ledger po na kung magkano pa yung funds. Normally, how long does it take to complete that whole process? From the time... Uh, the damage report has been submitted up to the time of the actual uh, release of funds to the uh, agencies. Uh, sir, uh, our uh, standard time for evaluation and processing of requests is 15 days. Uh, from the whole process, nagkaroon ng bagyo. Bago kayo makarelease ng pondo do sa mga calamity-stricken areas and of course to specific agencies, Gano'ng katagal mismo? Yung, hindi yung evaluation lang? Depende po kasi sa evaluation ni OCD. So, sa kanila din kami nagre-rely. OCD. Uh, sir, let me start by uh, explaining the default mechanism in the 10121, RA 10121. Uh, the default mechanism, sir, is that uh, in each of the four thematic areas, there are identified lead agencies. So, for uh, rehabilitation recovery, the lead agency is NEDA. But at the center of... Uh, of this all is, of course, Office of Civil Defense. For the purpose, for the rehabilitation recovery of uh, Marawi, there was a departure from that uh, because of that uh, mechanism because there was a creation of the Task Force Bank on Marawi. But uh, still, with the creation of the Task Force, all the soft and hard interventions for the rehabilitation recovery in Marawi will still be undertaken by the different departments involved. Like, for example, uh, making sure that uh, there are uh, interventions for the farmers, that's for the uh, Department of Agriculture. So, and uh, the task force was not empowered to undertake projects. Like, for example, uh, while there was a, a task force created, we still have that language in the GAA that reconstruction will be undertaken by DPWH. So that's a big stumbling block. Because from the point of view, strictly uh, following that uh, deep, uh, special provision, all reconstruction, like for example, uh, putting up uh, new barangay centers or barangay hall should be by the DPWH. Repair of farm to market roads, strictly speaking, it should be done by DPWH. So it even uh, for Marawi alone, sir, it will be too overwhelming for one department to undertake 
uh, all those reconstruction activities. And uh, in our process, after each uh, disaster, we conduct a post-disaster needs assessment. In the earthquake-stricken area, for example, in uh, Mindanao, we are still not on that uh, phase. We are still coordinating for the conduct of post-disaster needs assessment. Ka Normally it takes three months, di ba? Uh, to, PDNA, to complete sir, yes. the PDNA. Yes, sir. Mga and, three months yan eh. Yes, sir. And that is not enough as basis for the release of funds because the identified interventions will still be uh, uh, vetted and the project proposals will be formulated by the different agencies. Yeah, subject to the approval of, approval of the NDRMC as a council. So, but uh, ministerial na lang yun, sir. And uh, once the project proposals are submitted to OCD, we process that for approval of the Office of the Pre President and release of ZARO upon approval by DBM. So if we are able to integrate all these efforts uh, under one body, assuming that uh, we have created the department, how much time would be, you know, how can you compress? Ilan uh, yung masisave na time dito? Assuming na merong department uh, to address all uh, kinds of disaster, naka-integrate na lahat yung efforts, and kayo na rin yung implementing agency, of course, with the help of uh, several other agencies, but kayo yung lead role and the one controlling the implementation. Ano yung masisave nyo yung time? L lead role may be, sir, uh, can be large in the, de in the department, but the, still, the implementation... For the implementation, it will still rely on the different agencies. So what we can shortcut are maybe the approval process of the project. Chair, ay uh, di sabihin nyo, uh, Yusek Halad, yung nabanggit nyo yung term kanina, overwhelming. E, yung purpose nga nitong several bills na nakapile, e, para maalis na natin yung mga, yung mga hadlang yung sa overwhelming. So, kung kayo ba ibibigyan ng din ng operational arm, halimbawa, departamento na ito, meron din kayong construction arm, halimbawa, eh hindi ba ma mas lalong mapapabilis yung sinasabi ni Secretary, uh, ni Senator Lacson? Isang concrete example, malapit-lapit na lindol. Hindi pa nangyayari yun sa Metro Manila. Baka hindi na lang overwhelming yun. Pag lumindol na 7.2 rito sa Metro Manila, baka hindi na natin makonvene yung NDREMC. Baka mawala na yung OCD sa Aguinaldo pag na nabiyak na yung uh, buong EDSA. Yung huling lindol, porak, pampanga. Ganon kabilis yung naging proseso. Sinali natin dyan yung National Historical Institute para magawa yung simbahan sa porak, pampanga. Ganon kabilis po yung naging proseso doon. That was several months ago, during the height of the campaign, if I can recall. Frankly, sir, uh, I still have to see any interventions for the rehabilitation recovery of Region 3. Yun na nga sinasabi. Yun din ang sinasabi ni Senator Subiri. Para mapabilis na lahat ng ito, and uh, it appears, I've been talking to Senator Bato, parang you, you're a bit hesitant to accept the urgent need to have a separate department. Parang ang, ang, ang sinasabi nyo, mas mabuti pang i-lodge pa ito sa iba't ibang ahensya, pabilisin na lang yung proseso ng pagpapatakbo ng papel, eh, pero ganun din yung sinasabi ni Senator Subiri, baka dumating ulit tayo dun sa uh, finger pointing uh, blame game, lalong-lalo na pag nangyari yung the big one sa Metro Manila. Ay baka abutin tayo ng, ng taon bago tayo maka-recover. Maka, maka so, ang, ang tinutukoy ko po, Yusek Halad, sa inyo po bang pananaw? And, and, and I would request an answer of a yes or no. Dapat ba hong magkaroon ng Department of Disaster Management? Uh, if we limit our understanding to disaster management for a certain uh, thematic area of the uh, DRRM, yes, sir. Not because just risk reduction, but uh, to include rehabilitation and recovery. That will be a very big function to be placed in uh, one department, sir. Like, for example, uh, well, construction may be uh, that department can create a construction bureau you you have the you have the mo model of FEMA in the United States you have the model of Japan reconstruction agency uh, you have the model in Pakistan the earthquake recovery authority in Pakistan so kung ibibigay ba yung pondo ibibigay yung mandato yung kapangyarihan yung personnel lahat ng resources will that still be overwhelming 
Uh, parang isang buong gobyerno na rin siya. But PIMA is not undertaking rehabilitation recovery. But PIMA can, PIMA can uh, o, uh, order other, uh, the, the Army, the U.S. Army and other government uh, entities to, to join them in the rehabilitation work. So, ang, ang sinasabi siguro din kanina ng one of the authors, si Senator Subiri, kung hindi natin gagawin to at ang inyong uh, mindset ay palakasin lang yung OCD, ay eh baka ganun din yung mangyari sa atin pag tinamaan na naman tayo ng isang malakas na lindol for purposes of planning magkakawindang-windang tayo isang isang halimbawa po with the permission of uh, Mr. Chair yung nakaraang uh, El Nino ang dinulot po nito hindi lang kawalan ng tubig pagkatuyot ng lupa mas malakas na dengue kung meron sigurong Department of Disaster Management ay eh, naplano po ito Magkakaroon ba tayo ng water shortage? Mamamatay ba yung ating mga palayan? Mas malakas ba yung dengue strain pagkatapos ng El Nino? So ito po bang uh, ganitong setup ay eh, hahayaan na lang natin dahil uh, sa tingin nyo, with due respect, ay eh, overwhelming po ito sa isang bagong departamento kagaya ng kasasabi nyo lang para, para nagtayo na ng isang gobyerno. Eh, hindi po ba yun ang ating uh, katungkulan na palakasin yung Uh, yung, isa, yung isang setup, punuin niyo mga kakulungan para makaresponde ng tama. Salamat, Mr. Chair. So, kung if we, for the rehabilitation recovery, sir, uh, we not only have uh, interventions for reconstructions. So, maraming uh, soft and hard uh, interventions dyan. So, ilalagay natin dyan expertise on agriculture, expertise on water, expertise on so many things. Uh, not, it's not only uh, reconstruction. Uh, for that department to be planning and implementing. But what it can do really is just maybe plan and let the implementation be done by uh, concerned agencies who have the expertise. Are you, are you done? Ang observation yes, mo, baka kaya ginamit mo yung term na overwhelming dahil lahat ng trabaho sa reconstruction, recovery, rehabilitation ang magsasagawa lamang yung departamento yes, na in-envision. Even in the planning, sir, we still have to rely on the expertise of the different departments. Look at what is, OC, what is OCD doing now. We coordinate the participation of the different departments in the conduct of post-disaster needs assessment. The identification of the interventions are still with them. And we process the release of funds for the different project proposals uh, emanating from this department. Now, uh, can we imagine a one department doing all of this from the planning to implementation? So, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I agree with uh, Yusek uh, Halad because, for example, on uh, rehabilitation of roads and bridges that were damaged by earthquakes, hindi naman kaya ng Department of Disaster Management yan or Disaster Resilience. That go-to agency pa rin dyan, ang DPWH. But at the very least, there's a department na nakatutok dun, hindi nakakalimutan. Because um, ang punto siguro natin mga kasamaan, like the one in hap but what happened in Region 3 and, man 3 and many other regions, after the, di after the relief, the response on relief efforts and uh, uh, is quickly given to our people, yung rehabilitation efforts mabagal. At least kung may go-to agency dyan, nakatutok yan. Ilan lang naman yung bagyo at uh, earthquake na nangyayari, nangyayari sa ating bansa. So in a cabinet se setup, the president can ask the cabinet secretary in charge of disaster uh, preparedness, <clears throat> Secretary, kamusta na yung nangyari dun sa, sa Mindanao or sa Visayas uh, two years ago? For example, Haiyan or yung sa nangyari sa Leyte. Are we complete with our rehabilitation efforts. At least there's a go-to guy. The secretary now can go to his counterparts and say, Uy, ang bagal ninyong gumalaw ng highway. Ang bagal ninyong gumalaw sa, sa, sa mga tulay. Gawin na natin to. And then he can also make representation now to the DBM. For example, <clears throat> we lost about a thousand schools. Galing dyan si Senator Bong, galing dyan si Senator Bato, galing dyan si Senator Francis. I was there over the weekend as well in Cotabato. About a thousand classroom buildings are damaged. Huh? You know, this is a threat to our children who are going to study there. I'll make, uh, um, at the proper time, with the permission of Senator Laxon, 
we will make an amendment to the budget sana that will add additional budget for uh, reconstruction or rehabilitation of the damaged classrooms. But imagine 1,000 classrooms that translates to about 50, 50 per classroom, uh, means 100 per classroom. So you're looking at uh, uh, 100,000 students not being able to attend classes. Eh kung pinabayaan natin yun ng ilang taon, ibig sabihin nun, eh, pakonti-konti lang darating ng mga pondo para sa kanya. So if there's a department down, yan talagang tutok niya. Make sure that these classrooms are rehabilitated. Make efforts with the DBM, secretary, to make sure that these classrooms have are gotten the particular funding. Right now, with all due respect, sir, I don't think you can do that. And I don't think OCD does that. Unless I'm, you can prove me wrong, you can tell me wrong. Na kayo mismo pupunta kayo sa Quendel ng DBM at kinakausap nyo siya at hinihingan nyo ng budget ng para sa Cagayan Valley sa nangyaring disaster dun just two weeks ago. In a department level, you are equal. Kung sa justices pa, you are equal to the justices of the Supreme Court if you are one justice of the Supreme Court. You are one of 15. In this case, in the cabinet setting, you are going to be equal. Matutukan nyo yan. Tsaka may go-to na si Presidente sa efforts on rehabilitation. Parang, parang coordinating council, but you are now the coordinating point person in the point department. Yung council, tama sinabi ni Senator, si Chairman Laxon, sa dami-dami ng members ng NDRRMC, pag-ikot ng papel niyan, siyam-siyam, abutin tayo ng siyam-siyam, doon na na, nakakalimutan na yung problema, hindi na na-actionan. Thank you, Chair. Mahirap i-convene. Ito na nga lang, sabi mo nga, nabanggit na ni Presidente sa SONA, itong SONA, ang huli SONA, eh, niwala mas kaysa member ng NDRMC rito eh, we invited them. So, is this or are these proposals, legislative proposals or measures, really important? <coughs> and konting commercial lang because you mentioned that, that you went to Cotabato. I didn't go there, but I just sent tents. No, I requested Air Force to load it in a C-130 plane and just uh, delivered the uh, 800. Good for 800 tents, actually. So, yun. The Chair acknowledges the presence of Senator Coco. Mr. Chairman, just to add, for example, the quick drill, the shake drills in Metro Manila, with all due respect, no, and again, you can correct me today, but the lead agency is MMDA. Right? And then the former chairman, the former chairman of the MMDA who led the, the shake, he was the initiator of the Metro Manila-wide quake drill. MMDA po yan, dapat yan Office of Civil Defense or dapat yan Disaster Agency. Di ba? Um, I, I don't see any initiatives. Uh, my, my apologies, sir, uh, with all due respect, uh, but I don't see any initiatives coming out from the OCD, baka nahiya kayo, or other agencies. Feedbox. Feedbox yan, tsaka MMDA, nakikita ko palagi. Dapat kaya may ahensya na tayo na that will lead all this Nagtuturuan nga which agency will will do the shake uh, shake drills, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Nabanggit ni Senator Zubiri. In fact, modesty aside, I invented the term shake drill. Wala naman sa dictionary yun. That's part, again, of the ad hoc mentality that we have. Uh, kung sino yung gagalaw. I, I, I realized then na hindi man lang kami pala miyembro ng NDRIMC. I am MDA chair. Wala dun sa Republic Act 10121. But I just uh, took the initiative to to uh, have that exercise and I, I thank the, the uh, Secretary De Rosario na para na institutionalize ito. Going back to what uh, Senator Zubiri has been saying, ta talagang tama po na magkaroon na ng isang cabinet level position para sa disaster na hindi na iaasa sa iba. Kung maalala ni Yusek Halad, yung sa mayon, kung, nung, kung hindi po ako binigyan ng authority ni Presidente Ron, eh, baka walang umaten sa meeting ko. Nagpapamiting po ako sa uh, Camp Simeon Ola. Ang hirap pong patawag yung mga regional directors. Ang sinasabi ko na lang doon, eh, magre-report ako kay Presidente, kaya dumating yung DPWH, dumating na lahat. And we thank the OCD regional uh, head uh, for uh, helping us. So, napakahirap po talagang ipunin yung mga iba't ibang ahensya, DOH, DPWH, at kung sino-sino pa. Uh, dahil iba't iba po yung kanilang boss. Iba't iba yung kanilang mandato. Now, if you have one department na nagmamando lang nito, 
Eh, palagay ko po yung proseso kanina na banggit ng DBM na three months bago mapirmahan. Uh, itong, ito, nasisigurado ko po ito. Ha? Yung katatapos lamang na lindol sa Mindanao, ay eh, magtatagal po yung rehabilitation nito. Kausap po po yung mayor ng tulunan sa North Cotabato. Sabi nila, saan kami kukuha ng yero? Ang dami na namin napadalang uh, request sa OCD, sa Department of Education. Ang ginawa ng mayor, bumili na muna sila ng 1,000 na pohas na yero para sa mga classroom nila. Ang problema, nag-collapse din pala yung mga walls ng mga classroom sa tulunan, Cotabato. Paano lalagay mo naman yung yero? Eh, basag pala yung mga pader. So, a lot of, I am very sure, uh, after five months, six months, hindi pa tapos yung problema na banggit ni Senator Subiri tungkol sa mga classroom sa magsaysay, sa makilala, sa tulunan, at marami pang iba na dumanas ng isang napakalakas na lindol dahil yung proseso, iba't ibang ahensya, ang tagal ng approval, ayun po yung dahilan, yung struktura natin. So again, I, I, Mr. Chair, I, I reiterate my previous pending question to you, Sek Halad. Answerable by yes or no? Payag po ba kayong magkaroon ng isang kagawaran, Department of Disaster Management, na tututok sa lahat ng ito o hindi? Yun lang po. Yes, sir. But we sh there should be management of the expectations that it will not assume that many functions of the different department. What, what it will have is parang tasking authority taga-autos na gawin niyo ito, gagawin niyo ito, gagawin niyo ito. And of course, the provision in the interim funds, which is, uh, the, uh, we depart from the definition of the interim funds as provided in uh, 10.121, sir. We have a separate unique sometimes, uh, uh, it changes uh, sometimes on a year-to-year -year basis. So kailangan na uh, uh, susunod din yon doon sa, ano, sa it will be patterned on the responsibility of that uh, department. It cannot, uh, the, the department cannot be the implementing agency of all interventions for rehabilitation recovery. There are interventions. In fact, uh, most of these interventions will be done by the different agencies or department concerns, which will be tasked by that DDR. VM, when you create a new department, Magkano abutin yung recurring appropriations? Say, when you created the ICT, when we created the ICT, when we created the Department of uh, Urban Housing, no? Urban Development, magkano yung recurring, ano? Lahat. PS, MOE, ito na yung mga recurring, eh. Huwag na yung pang, uh, yung operational, ano? Kasi ito, uh, moving yun, eh. But yung, yung uh, mga basic uh, funding requirements in order to make a newly created department effective and efficient. Magkano? Sir, for an average of 700 positions per department. Per department, ang average is 700 uh -huh, positions. Uh -huh. okay. Mga 1B, sir, ang basic for the... Administrative expense pa lang ito. PS, MOE, PS, and MOE. CO, sir, basic. Yeah. Basic. Uh -huh. so, sige. <laughs> so, okay. Pag nagkirita, yung magkano budget nung uh, to be activated this coming January, yung sa inyo, magkano yung budget initial? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honors, with regards to the Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development, ang uh, sa department itself, kasi sir, wala kaming uh, projects, all PS and MOOE lang. Uh, basically, yung uh, budget namin last year, combined yung HADSI sa HLURB, Basically the same law. But uh, of course, since we are going to increase our personnel uh, from uh, 600 to 1,500, eventually for PS it will increase. But the budget for production is still embedded with the National Housing Authority and the Social Housing Finance Corporation, Your Honor. How many personnel, organic personnel, do you have now? Now, Sarah, we have about 550. It will increase to 1,500. How many so, undersecretaries are there? Uh, now we, I only have one. 
In the new department, I will have three under secretaries. Three How many ASEC? Uh, three ASECs also, sir. Three ASEC. How many bureau directors? I'll have three uh, bureau directors. Uh, all in all, sir, uh, from a strength of 550, it will become 1,500. Because we will now have uh, representations in all regions. Now we do not have uh, representation in all regions. And rightly so, kasi paano kayo mag-function yung isang buong department kung walang regional offices, hindi ba? Yes, sir. And I think, sir, if that will happen for the proposed uh, Department of Disaster Resilience and Rehabilitation, they will be having regional offices, the right-sizing of regional offices. I think they can manage the resilience aspect as the rehabilitation aspect. Of course, they will not be the one to undertake the actual rehabilitation. It is still in tandem with the implementing agencies. But they are calling the shot. Eh, Senator Coco may input dito eh, because we were conniving when, while Senator Subiri was delivering his privilege speech. And we had a little discussion about how to right size at the same time, create new departments. Senator Coco? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> well, uh, one lesson learned from one of our trips abroad. So, for example, in France, when uh, President Macron? Macron. Macron, when, when uh, Macron was elected president, he immediately uh, overhauled the bureaucracy by creating a new ministry to reflect the uh, priorities of his administration. So, sabi ko kay Senator Laxon, sa ibang bansa, ganun sila kabilis to, to create ministries to reflect priorities of the administration, but elect, that is the, the elect, administration is the latest expression of the will of the people. You know, it's important. Nila. Sabi ko, bakit sa Pilipinas ang hirap gumawa ng department? Uh, is it is it uh, is it against the constitution to have a lean department? Pwede naman siguro, kasi President Duterte's uh, priorities are, and he mentioned this uh, department for. Uh, water, uh, department for OFWs, and then ito yung disaster management. So, huwag sana gamitin yung argument na uh, this is going to bloat the bureaucracy, this is going to cost too much. Because if other countries can do it, why can we not do it here in the Philippines to reflect the, the uh, priorities of the administration? And I have read the Constitution, hindi naman bawal yata to have a lean and mean uh, department. So, but the DBM uh, representative here has mentioned that uh, when you create a department, you already envision 700 uh, positions, uh, ma'am, because of the presence uh, nationwide. Ganun po ba? Uh, for an estimated share of 700 positions, we computed how much will Where be did you get the 700? Uh, it's an average lang ho. Yeah, you studied the, the Department of Agriculture, Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Oh, parang, sir, yun home, natin, parang sir, yun home pinaka-basic for pinaka -basic. a department okay. to operate. Yeah, but this is, there is no law or any constitutional rule, di ba, which makes it uh, 700. We yes. can have a leaner department. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So especially now that we have heard that uh, if we create this department, it is not expected to do the rehab, in your point, eh. uh, but it can be expected to do the anticipation, the preparation, and even seguro the prediction for those calamities which can be predicted. Uh, an earthquake kasi wala pa dun sa category na yun. Eh. So yun lang po yung aming, yun lang po yung aking point na uh, uh, let's not be Let's not have a uh, fixed idea in our minds that the department automatic na alake bloated. And then also, is there a law or rule or a constitutional principle na bawal maglipat ng tao from existing departments to a new department? Lalo na if we admit that bloated yung isang department, di ba? Oh, wala. I think this has been done before, di ba? Wala naman yata. Will it affect or the will it will it affect the government service? Uh, record of the employee who will be transferred from an existing department to a new department? 
Ma'am, just for the record, para... Uh -huh. It will not affect It will not affect, di ba? Uh -huh. so Kasi it... matitransfer lang ho siya from one department. Yes, so we can do it, di ba? So, ganun, uh -huh. so... Ganun na lang. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think we have... We have uh, Kasi we In that way, talking. we can address both the right-sizing uh, as a policy direction of the president. At the same time, yung pronouncement yet to create these additional uh, departments will be addressed, di ba? Yes, tsaka yung right-sizing, al ato, mga ato sa Duterte administration. When we, your supporters of President Duterte, when we propose the creation of departments, because we hear it from him and we agree with him, Ang binabalik sa atin ay yung pro same proposal coming from then Secretary Jokno about right-sizing the government. Uh, which is, I think, wrong. No? Which is, I think, uh, ad not, really a, not, not really an accurate uh, counter to, uh, to the proposal. Kasi right-sizing, uh, according to the, the, the original idea of Secretary Jokno, I think he just wanted the delegation of power to the president so that the, power, the president can collapse it's already the, the small, yung mga already small offices existing in the different departments na nobody knows about or uh, functus officio na, wala nang, wala, nang, uh, wala nang purpose, yun yun eh. So sa tingin ko, siguro when you have uh, a, cab a cabinet meeting, I-abandon na lang yung concept ng right-sizing. Ginagamit kasi as an argument against the creation of the departments na priorities ng Duterte administration. Okay, so kinuha lang yung word na hindi naman yun yung tamang idea. Eh. Ang tamang idea is yung mga maliliit, tanggalin na by administrative action. O, oh, tayo, gagawa tayo ng department to reflect to reflect not only priorities of the administration but the needs of, the, of our complex society. Eh, ano na, complicated ng society ngayon. We need, we need, the, we need at the same time, ano eh, we need at the same time, uh, uh, ano tawag mo dyan? Specialization. Oh, specialization na yung ganun eh. Department of Disaster uh, Resiliency and Management, specialization. Housing, specialization. In, internet, uh, information Communications Technology. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you for the, for the time. Senator Bongo, it's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the good senator from Cavite, Senator Luxon, for this committee hearing calling for the creation of the Department of Disaster Resilience, including Senate Bill 205, filed by yours truly. Mr. Chairman, it is high time that we recognize the fact that our country is uh, highly vulnerable to ominous disasters given the frequency of natural cal calamities like typhoons, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions that hit and affect us every year. Just recently, a series of earthquakes occurred in Mindanao, three of which were above 6.0 in the magnitude scale. 28 of our countrymen died, while almost 700 were injured in terms of economic impact. It is projected that the earthquakes could lead to a temporary rise in poverty, and delay in infrastructure projects on top of the costs and losses incurred by civilians and businesses in the region. Pati po ang bahay ko at kay Pangulo ay nagkaroon po nga ng crack. Having said that, Mr. Chair, we'd like to put on record that only through the realization of the Department of Disaster and Resilience can we mitigate the consequences of such calamities resulting to few casualties if not none, Mr. Chair, it has become clear that a comprehensive, specialized, and holistic approach is the only way to address the catastrophic effects and outright avoidance of the adverse impacts caused by the national by, caused by natural disasters. Mr. Chair, ilagay po natin sa isang departamento ang lahat ng may kaugnayang ehensya sa pagpapatayo ng department, departamento ito upang mas magiging mabilis at epektibo ang paghatid ng tulong ng gobyerno sa pagbibigay ng serbisyo sa mga nasalanta, naging biktima ng mga kalamidad, at masiguro ang agarang aksyon para sa mabilis na pagbangon ng ating mga kababayan. In closing, in closing Mr. Chair, I am urging everyone in this August uh, body to act in haste. Huwag na po tayong magsayang ng oras. Huwag na po nating antayin na may dumating pang matinding kalamidad na tumama sa ating bansa 
it is time to scale up our preparedness and resi resiliency against natural disasters. Panahon na po na magkaroon tayo ng ENSA, magbibigay ng buong atensyon sa ating paghahanda at pagresponde sa mga kalimidad at sakuna. To Yusek uh, Halad, uh, since sinabi mo kanina, uh, payag ba kayo na magkaroon na tayo ng uh, sariling uh, departamento na talagang nakatutok dito sa mga disasters? Okay, okay lang sa inyo. Uh, even without uh, assurance na ikaw ang magiging sekretary, kagad. <laughs> anyway, sa totoo lang, uh, si Pangulong uh, Duterte, gusto niya tal al alam niyo yun, magkasama tayo noon, gusto niya talaga na magkaroon ng isang point person, na isa lang yung kausap at lahat, uh, yun ang mamamahala mama ng uh, lahat. Tama kanina si Secretary Tolentino, Secretary, uh, si Senator, Secretary to noon eh, Senator Tolentino, Senator Lacso, na magkaroon tayo ng Secretary level na talagang merong authority. Kasi totoo lang, pumunta rin kami last week doon. Yung mga LGUs natin, yung mga mayors, di nila alam saan sila hingi ng tulong. Di nila alam sinong hanapin nila at hingi ng tulong. So ngayon, with secretary level, ikaw na lang yung kakausapin, ikaw na yung makikipag-coordinate sa lahat, including, yung, yung panahon kagad, immediately. Pag may nangyari, unang tatawagan ng mayor, tatanoy ng mayor, saan ba kami hingi ng tulong? Sa mga tents, sa mga pagkain, so DSWD, DPWH, kung may mga nasisirang infrastructure. Ngayon, kung meron na tayong isang de department level, head, secretary, yun na yung makikipag-coordinate. Nung pumunta nga kami doon sa North Cotabato, wal, wal, wala namang pong taga-OCD o uh, nakatuto kagad. Dahil sobrang laki ng tinamaan, alam ko pong kulang talaga yung personnel ng uh, OCD para sikasuhin po ang lahat ng mga naging biktima. With uh, secretary level na authority, madali lang yung pakikipag- uh, coordinate nyo kaagad. Ilang personnel ho ba meron kayo ngayon sa region na uh, 10 sa OCD natin? Uh, the approved plan... 12 ba yan? I'm sorry. 12 ang ano, no? North Cotabato? 12? Region 12, yes. Sir. Okay, I'm sorry. Region 12. And uh, on the average, sir, what we, we have uh, well, the maximum uh, plantilla positions in the regions on the average is 25 or 26. Uh, the current fill-up is maybe uh, on the average nasa 20. Kasi uh, hindi mabilis. Eh, hindi tayo uh, kasing bilis mag-fill-up ng position. Isipin mo, to, 20. Tapos yes. ang naging biktima, 20,000. Yes. Okay. And um, that's why kailangan may empower talaga yung uh, local government units. And uh, yung nabanggit niyo, sir, kanina para mabilis yung assistance talaga is uh, we are, uh, uh, this pertains to emergency management. So para mabilis makonsolidate ng isang department level uh, uh, agency na yon yung uh, pag-manage ng uh, emergency. And uh, other departments will still be involved. Like for example, making sure that we have doctors in each of the uh, rehabilit uh, evacuation centers, ay siguro hindi kayang ibigay yun ng uh, department. So it will have to rely on uh, other organizations. But uh, if we imagine, sir, that uh, reduction of the risk, reducing the vulnerability, uh, making sure that uh, uh, people adhere to the building code, well, uh, nasa power pa rin yun ang local government unit kasi sila yung nag-i-issue ng uh, one, eh, uh, building permit. So, siguro ang ibibigay na power dyan ng, ano, ng uh, department is to file cases of uh, violations. But making sure that uh, monitoring that uh, uh, all constructions of houses and uh, all buildings per se are in accordance with the building code. 
ay nasa may existing ano naman tayo na may existing uh, arrangement or agencies concern it's the local government unit so ang mabilis talaga nating tutukan ay kailangan nating tutukan is the response phase and the rehabilitation the response because uh, we're talking of uh, DSWD for the relief opera, uh, for the provision of uh, relief goods right now and managing of the evacuation centers DOH for the health surveillance in the affected area uh, DepEd uh, for the management of the schools to situate na makapagput up sila kagad ng temporary learning spaces dahil may mga damaged classroom siguro and even uh, schools na ginagamit na evacuation center so kailangan ng kagad makapagput up sila ng temporary learning spaces and uh, the NHA to help in the relocation so marami rin tayong kailangan talagang ano include ng mga department so ang magiging uh, role nitong department secretary is uh, taga utos doon sa ano but it will not be able to take over uh, all the functions related to response and rehabilitation recovery. Taga uto siya. Sa totoo lang, Yusak Halad, kailangan talaga ng authority ng isang secretary at isang departamento na makikipag-coordinate. Kasi kung Yusak, ang hirap mo i-gather ng mga to. So kung meron ka ng sarili mong departamento, regional offices, madali mo silang i-gather with 20,000 mag victims and then 23 26 personnel mo with the USEC uh, level ay mahirap mong tawagin eh, kanya-kanyang super superstar din ng mga yan so hindi mo magagather talaga so hindi na po makakanta yung mga magiging biktima pa kung sakaling may bagyo lindol tapos napakaliit po ng uh, opisina ng OCD and sometimes hingi ka ng pondo Eh, hindi pa yan makikinig sa iyo with the uh, USEC level and a small uh, office under the uh, Department of National uh, Defense. That's why I'm uh, pushing for uh, this creation po. Salamat, uh, Mr. Chairman. Senator uh, Subir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, ang aking gustong tanong, hindi po yung resource persons natin, pero yung ating kasamaan, Senator Bongo, sure na ba hindi ito ibibito ni Presidente? Kasama na po yan sa kanyang uh, zona at uh, priority niya po yan. At uh, tama yung sinabi ng Senator Lacson kanina, kulang ko lang yung mga resource person dito. Nandito and, and sila. Uh, maybe hindi sila interesado, yes. pero ang ating, I'm sure, ang ating Pangulo ay interesado dahil tulad sa mga nangyayari, daming pumunta kayo mismo dun sa mga naging biktima ng earthquake. Kulang-kulang talaga. Hindi, hindi nga nila alam kung sino lalapitan nila, sino ang taga DSWD, sino ang taga DepEd, DPWH. Ngayon, kung meron lang taga Department of Disaster, ah, ito. Ito na yung point person. Ito yung makikipag-coordinate. Especially yung mga LGUs, yung mga mayors. Litong-lito yan. Hindi nila alam saan sila nahingi ng tulong. Sino yung tatawagan nila from national. Ngayon, tatanong yung mayor, sino bang pwede natin lapitan to to repair nito di PWS. Ngayon, kung meron na ikaw na lang yung kausap yung department uh, secretary, yun na yung tatawag sa lahat. Isang coordination na lang po ang uh, panggagalingan. Binanggit ko po yan, Mr. Chairman, with, uh, with the permission of the body. Dahil nga, kulang na kulang ang ating resource persons. Sabi ko yung mga mahalaga wala dito. For example, Secretary Wendell of the DBM, we have to get his comments. We also have to get the comments of the DOST that your FIVOX and PAGASA is under the DOST. Obviously, we will be removing or we will be taking a big chunk of their uh, uh, people and their expertise to be placed here, the department. Maybe we can focus the DOST on, on science and technology and uh, technology uh, transfers. Uh, ano pa, uh, Chairman, wala din dito po. Uh, we would have liked to see Secretary, uh, your immediate boss, you sexy Secretary Lorenzana, of the AFP, the by uh, OCDs under the chairman, uh, chairman. DND, is the chairman. Chairman. Asha, ah, chairman. Lahat naman to mga kaibigan natin, but we have to seek their comments on this particular issue. 
mahalagang mahalaga itong batas na to, and I truly believe the President wants this. Ngayon, tumama. Imagine he asked this last year at the State of the Nation address. Now the disaster is close to his home, which is Davao. Pati bahay daw na bahay niyo ay inalog din. So, um, I'm sure now, more than ever, he's resolved to pass this measure. And we have the assurance of our dear colleague from Davao and the, uh, the, the most trusted person of our president. So let's take this seriously, gentlemen, ladies. Ayaw po namin mawala. Hindi po ito uh, pagtatanggal ng responsibilidad sa isang ahensya. Ito po yung pagpapalakas at papaganda ng sistema na itinayo natin almost 12 years ago or 10 years ago under the NDRRMC or Disaster Preparedness Law, which we feel is lacking after 10 years of implementation. Ito na po. We've seen what can happen. Waka we can move forward. Eh, sabi ko nga kay Senator Lacson, eh, kung mapabilisan na yung mga budget hearings bukas, mag-umpisa na, lalong tatagal kasi ako itatayo at magtatanong ako sa mga departamento <coughs> kung sangayon ba sila sa plano natin gawin yung itong Department of Disaster Resilience or Disaster Preparedness or Disaster Management. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. What, another area of concern that we may consider as a big stumbling block dito sa sa rehabilitation ng mga uh, calamity-stricken uh, or disaster-stricken areas. Alam nyo, nagsasabi tayo lagi ng yung plan, di ba? Disaster plan, rehabilitation, reconstruction, disaster plan. But unlike the PDP, yung uh, in the PDP laban, yung Philippine Development Plan, hindi ito binibigyan ng importance eh. NEDA is the Vice Chair of NDRRMC. But I notice, whenever we submit in, in our case, we submitted uh, after, within eight months and we submitted the comprehensive rehab, reconstruction and rehabilitation plan for Yolanda. And the president approved, President Pinoy at the time, approved the budget, 167 billion. And then the following year, I noticed that DBM at the time released only, what, 1 billion pesos or 2 billion. So how could we accomplish yung rehabilitation kung hindi naman sinusunod o hindi binibigyan ng importance yung NDRRMP, P for plan. Another area of concern is the capacity of the LGUs. Sa ngayon, ilang percent lang yung uh, active do sa local, uh, moni yung sa monitoring. Uh, this under OCD, di ba? A good, what, 50 percent, 47 percent? Hindi lahat capacitated. Hindi lahat ng LGUs, meron sila mga planning officers who are able to prepare their development plan after a calamity, after a disaster. So, ang question is, how would a proposed department address these issues? Would you have any idea? Or, well, we would these issues depart, be addressed? Uh, yes, sir. We should depart from the practice of uh, vetting the individual uh, project proposals. So, Hinugin na natin doon sa comprehensive rehabilitation recovery plan. And then kung may mga, yung mga identified intervention doon, sir, may uh, identified implementing agencies and the corresponding amount. So on the uh, basis of that uh, uh, rehabilitation and recovery plan, which will be elevated to the president for approval, that should be the basis for the release of funds. So malaking mas shortcut natin sa process. Creation of, the, of a department uh, can address those issues, including the capacitation of LGUs that are incapacitated to even prepare a uh, recovery plan. Uh, we are doing Question what we how? are doing now is capacitating the LGUs in the preparation of their. Uh, so how do you capacitate the LGUs? Uh, Anong uh, method niyo to capacitate? Uh, in the crafting of the, we review the local DRM plan, sir. But uh, OCD alone cannot do it. Reviewing uh, the LDRRMP, would that capacitate them? You're just reviewing them. Uh, we provide the template uh, for the. But they, if they don't have the technical know how, hindi well, sila capacitated, no matter how you review. Yes. No matter how you give the template, hindi rin la kayang gawin. Yes, sir. Well, uh, we have other programs for the in 
to build the capacities of the local government units. Uh, like, for example, uh, uh, training program on uh, service continuity planning, training program on uh, incident command system. But uh, our, the best approach that we can do is the training of trainers. Training of trainers so that uh, when these uh, train trainers will go back to their uh, local government units, they will be doing the uh, training within the... Parang re-echo. May re-echo. May, may mga trainers na pinapadala kayo. For example, in Marawi, have you completed your NDRRMP? Uh, or DRRMP? Meron ba? There was an approved uh, CRRP. Yeah. CRRP, oh, so for Marawi. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors, for the uh, Marawi Rehabilitation, uh, we have a completed CRRP that was approved by the President. And When uh, was this approved? Sir? When was this approved? Uh, last year, sir. It was approved uh, last, last year. Last year? Yes, sir. Oh, how is the rehabilitation efforts proceeding based on the approval made by the President? And how much budget did you... Yeah, magkano ba yung uh, budget na na-approve doon, yung sa CRRP? The total na? budget uh, approved was 60 billion, 13 billion for the most affected area, and 47 billion outside the most affected area. Uh, how much has been released, DBM, for Marawi? Out of the 60 billion approved budget or funding for the rehabilitation and recovery of Marawi, how much has been released so that far? That covers from the very beginning, yung sa relief na 5 billion and so forth. Sir, sa 2018 po natin, uh, ang na-release is... Yung Marawi lang. Uh, we have for 2018 we have 10 billion uh, the balance for uh, punon is 5.1 and yung available balance po niya ngayong 2019 uh, as of october is 4.3 out of that there is a pending uh, earmark amount uh, amounting 4.4.1 billion sir magkano yung total na yung muna na obligate how much has been obligated out of the total uh, uh, released I, Around 4.9 billion for last year, sir. For this year? Um, 2018. For 2019, magkano nang na-obligate? Uh, wait, sir. Marawi lang pig-usapan, ha? Huwag mong ihalo yung iba. Ito pala yung Marawi Task Force. <laughs> we just w would like to find out what is the funding gap. So in the meantime, Sir Vice Chair Samarawi, you go back. Sir, uh, actually, sir, we have a pending 3.5 billion now. Uh, at the you have a pending, pending 3.5 billion. Pending uh, what? Anong class pending event? approval. Ah, by, so that's OP. OP. Yes, sir. It's 3.5 billion. 3.5 for 2019. Uh, that will be taken away from the 2018 uh, remaining balance. Ah, kasi hindi lahat na disburse yung... Pero obligated. Uh, Sabi mo obligated yung 4.9 eh. Continue. Uh, Na-release namin yun, sir. Oh, release? Yes, sir. Uh, for yung galing po sa 2018. Wait, wait, wait. When DBM releases uh, funds, if it's been obligated ng agency, because you would not release if it's not obligated. Di ba? Anong basis ng release kung hindi obligated? It may not be disbursed yet, pero necessarily, once you release appropriations or allocations, dapat obligated yan. Uh, sir, depending the um, sa implementing agencies po ang nag obligate sir. Yeah, I know. Pero anong basis ng release niyo kung hindi uh, hindi ma-obligate nung o hindi walang perfected na notice of award? Hindi niyo approve in. That's how I understand it. So, out of the 4.9 billion, magkano rito yung obligated ng yung sa agency sa Marawi? 
let's talk about para specific case. Uh, actually, sir, uh, once the requests of the implementing agencies are forwarded to OCD, then to the Office of the uh, President, it is released through SARO and the Notice of Cost Allocation. Then that's the time that they will obligate it. So, i-release muna dahil wala man sari i-obligate kapag hindi na-release ng DBM. But of course, the reason why you're requesting for uh, funding, meron kayong project proposal. Uh, you had a pre-procurement process already. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yun nga. Pinpointed nyo na. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, naka-outline na rin sa CRRP lahat ng uh, budgetary requirements. So, out of the 60 billion, yung 13 billion, ito yung sa most affected. Most diba? affected area. And out of the 13 billion, ang nare-release ng DBM, 4.9. Uh, actually, sir, sama-sama na yung 60, 60 billion eh. Yung uh, original na 10 billion, uh, may remaining balance na 4 billion in uh, 2018. Meron kami nakapending ngayon na 3.5 billion to get the remaining balance. Okay. Actually, most of the infra projects will be undertaken this uh, last quarter and first quarter of uh, 2020. Kasi inuna, sir, yung uh, debris management that costs about 2.3 billion. How about Yolanda? How much uh, has I, I, been released so far? Sino ba in charge ng Yolanda ngayon? Sa implementation, ha? ako, plan lang yung sa akin. Eh. Kaya nga, when I submitted the plan in it, and when it was approved, I resigned. Sir, the, the head of the task force authority. Yolanda is the cabinet secretary. Eh, wala akong implementing authority. Tutunga nga lang ako dun eh. The no, no. The administrative order issued yeah, is to prepare a comprehensive plan and that's it. When I accomplished that, and when it was approved by the president with the corresponding uh, funding, I I thought I had nothing to do anymore. Wala naman ako implementing authority, so I resigned. Sino nga in charge sa Yolanda? Nobody? It's the cabinet secretary, sir. The cabinet secretary. Nun, may housing, may DPWH, may school buildings. Yes, sir. It was the task force Yolanda was given to the cabinet secretary. Sino? Ah, cabinet secretary. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, nga, sir, one, one thing good in this proposed department, we could now uh, do away with task forces. Yeah. Para tayo yeah, ad-hoc. Sabi namin ni yes, Senator Francis, eh, ang hilig-hiling natin mag-task force, mag-ad-hoc, wala na-accomplish kasi ad-hoc nga eh. Kaya it's about time. Tama yun, mag-create tayo ng not necessarily department, ano? If we have to debate on this, ano? Pero kailangan merong singular authority, naka-structure talaga, na responsible. May authority sa kanya yung responsibilidad. Hindi yung pagdating ng panahon, hindi mo maintindihan kung sinong lalapitan. Sabi nga, ni Senator Bongo, di ba? Ang tanong ng mga mayor, kanito lalapit? So have you changed your mind na amenable na kayo na magkaroon department? Yes, sir. Uh, regarding Yolanda, sir, uh, while there is a task force created by the president, uh, OCD is still uh, involved in there. And uh, we are no longer processing any funds for the release of, for the implementation of Yolanda projects. We are now just into the monitoring of the implementation of the different projects. And uh, I just don't have the update uh, right, right now, sir. We recently commemorated uh, uh, Yolanda. Katulad yan, Mr. Chairman, with the permission of the body. Katulad yan, nawawala ng follow-up. In fair, with all due respect, sir, nawawala ng follow-up. Kung may department dyan and the secretary, the new president, whoever he may be, can always follow up with that secretary what has been done for Yolanda, what has been done for all the other areas that were struck by typhoons and calamities, meron talagang go-to agency. Yan, dyan siya nakatutok. Kukulitin niya lahat ng agencies at uh, magkakaroon siya ng report. The president can request a yearly or quarterly report from him on the um, pace of the uh, rehabilitation efforts in these areas. So talaga napakahalaga. Because uh, it, with, due, with due respect to the chairman of the NDRRMC, which I think is Sec Secretary Lorenzana, Ang dami niyang trabaho. He's in charge of external defense. Internal defense. Ang dami pa natin internal uh, security problems. So, hindi niya matutukan yan. 
uh, he, they become the secretaries of national defense, become reactionary. The, you see them during the typhoons and the uh, uh, calamities. But after one, two, three months, wala na yan kasi they're already taking charge of the West Philippine Sea. They're taking charge of attacks by the insurgents. So, kailangan talaga may nakatutok dyan. I think we're all in unison there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chen. Of the, uh, before I recognize, isang baka makalimutan ko. Of the four thematic areas, which is the most problematic or challenging? It's Based on the, your experience. Huh? It's the rehabilitation and recovery, sir. And uh, when the OPAR was uh, deactivated, uh, my understanding then was that uh, we went back to the default mechanism provided by the RA-10121 and uh, the rehabil overall rehabilitation recovery uh, is lodged with the NDRMC, but uh, the lead agency there is the, the NEDA. So when uh, we assumed in 2016, we had, I think, 19 billion uh, still unutilized, uh, funded or legislated in 2016. We understand, we understood the low utilization rate at the time because uh, the previous administration did not uh, release due to the election period. So. Uh, what we did was we OCD and NEDA functioned as the overall uh, lead uh, in uh, seeing to it that all these funds will be utilized. So, but we still have to talk with the different agencies concerned. They formulated the project proposal. Senator De La Rosa is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sir, uh, I'm just glad that Yusik uh, Halad categorically answer the yes for the creation of the department. Kasi kung hindi ka sumagot, sir, I would like to give you a piece of advice. <laughs> uh, yung, na huwag, huwag sana kayong matakot uh, na ma-overwhelm itong proposed uh, department na ito with the enormous task, lalong-lalo sa rehabilitation. Sana ang concern natin ngayon is uh, how to overwhelm the victims with the response that uh, they should have felt coming from the government after the disaster. Kasi meron lang, ito, ako sir, eh, hindi ko alam ngayon kung anong agency dapat ang mag-cater uh, nito. Meron ako nakikita ang looming problem doon sa, sa amin, sa Davos, or particularly doon sa Magsaysay, Matanao, Bansalan. Yung itong nangyaring uh, after the lindol, after the earthquake, yung every day, halos every hour, merong after shocks. Uh, if this uh, situation uh, cannot be mitigated, hindi naman talaga natin mahinto yung after shocks. Uh, wala mang makapaghinto niyan. Sa akin lang, anong mitigation na gagawin natin dito? Kung tuloy-tuloy ito, I am afraid na baka marami akong kababaya doon sa Davao na mabuang. Dahil nga, every now and then may after shock. Kahit na nasa evacuation center na sila, hindi sila nagsisilong sa mga mga building dahil takot sila sa eskwilahan, sa church, sa gymnasium. Hindi sila nagsisilong dahil takot baka mabagsak yung bubong. So nasa labas sila ng tabi ng kalsada, nagtitent yung mga... Binigay ni Senator Lakson ng mga tent doon, nandun na, nakadeploy na yun doon, along sa kalsada. Tinitiis na yung ulan, init, bahala na, basta hindi lang mabagsakan ng hard object from above. So, every time mayroon kunting after shock, magsigawan yung mga bata, magtakbuhan, maratil ba. So, if this, go, if this will go on, on and on, for a longer period of time, I'm afraid maraming psychologically... Uh, magiging may psychological problem mga bata, mga tao doon, lalo lalo yung mga bata. Kaya nga, hindi ko alam kung sinong mag uh, under, undertake ng mitigation nitong problema doon dahil ay huwag ko kung dapat bang tanggalin sila from the their present uh, evacuation areas to another municipality na hindi nakakaramdam ng after shock. So, other uh, province na mal malaking kwan ito. This is an enormous task. Hindi pa tayo, hindi pa ito part ng rehabilitation. 
part pa lang ito ng ano pa bang phase ito, sir? Nasa mitigation o nasa response? Sir. Response, o sa response ito. So, sana meron mag-undertake niyan yung problema na yan. Hanggang ngayon, sige pa rin, morning, afternoon, hapon. Kaya nga, yung, alam mo, ako, my, my, my wife and my children, we live in Bato Santa Cruz, Dabo del Sur, which is about uh, uh, 40 kilometers pa magsaysay. But doon sa Bato, nung nag-break yung Senate, doon kami nakatira, every now and then mayroong after shocks. Sabi ng wife ko, natatakot ako, lipad na tayo, balik na tayo ng Manila. Sabi Yo, yo na, matanda na yun ha. Gusto nang bumalik sa Manila. Parang hindi na sa taga-Davao. Umiiwas na doon sa after shock. So sa, uh, sana may mag-undertake ng problema niya, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Mr. Chair, if I may. Senator Bongo. Uh, um, sinabi na rin po ni Senator Bato kanina. While uh, I agree eh, na important ang mga ito, equally important din po na proactive tayo bago pa po ang sakuna, handa na ang mga LGUs. Kaya kailangan talaga yung departamentong ito. May magtuturo sa kanila anong dapat nilang gawin kung sakasakali darating. Not only after, but uh, turuan na yung mga LGUs natin kung sakaling bumalik. Ituloy-tuloy ito minsan itong earthquake sa Mindanao. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, in reply to the yeah, question. Before I recognize Senator Tolentino, yes. In reply to the question. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh. Sir, yeah, thank you, sir. In reply to the question or remarks of uh, Senator uh, De La Rosa, sir, uh, let me ex uh, explain what we are doing right now. We have a institutionalized the uh, response of the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council and um, designated leads in um, the clusters that were organized. And among the intervention is the conduct of psychosocial treatment. And these are being uh, provided by uh, DepEd for the school children, uh, DSWD in the evacuation centers, and likewise, uh, DOH. So, sila yung nag-address na, no, situate na uh, mabawasa naman yung pangamba ng ating mga tao, hindi mapunta doon sa ma mabaliw na sinabi ni Secretary at ni Senator De La Rosa. So, yun ang approach natin, sir. Yung response natin ngayon is not simply giving of relief goods. So, meron tayo isang cluster which is water, sanitation, and health. I admit this is our one of our greatest challenges in the response that is ongoing right now. Kasi ilan lang yung evacuation centers na ginagamit. Uh, wala pa yung evacuation center na na-approve ni Presidente na uh, ginagawa ng DPWH. Mostly ang ginagamit doon are schools. And we understand schools, baka isa o dalawang CR lang yan. So, we are now putting up uh, additional uh, toilet facilities. Problema din sa tubig yan, uh, lalo na nasira yung uh, water district. So, we have ongo ongoing interventions to address these problems, uh, but uh, we are uh, focusing on, uh, on these problems here. Uh, we expect uh, there are uh, long-term evacuees that's coming from the uh, communities that were declared by or places declared by peoples and MG, MGB as no longer safe for habitation. So these people will be staying uh, uh, a long, long period of time in the evacuation centers. But we have to free the schools of uh, the evacuees. Kaya kinakailangan na uh, isang tinitingnan namin sir is to put up uh, transit or uh, temporary shelters while uh, NHA will be putting up resettlement uh, houses for those families that are dislocated. So, hindi lang ang response natin, sir, ngayon is hindi lang pamimigay ng pagkain. In fact, uh, wala na tayo masyadong problema ngayon sa pagkain. Uh, marami na yung binigay ng D DSWD. Marami pang ibibigay at 
maraming namimigay na mga donors. Ang problema natin dyan is sustainment. Baka uh, habang tumatagal, mag na rin yung mga influx ng uh, donations of uh, relief goods. So uh, that's my one of my recommendations to the President in the last cabinet meeting that uh, all these agencies involved should uh, plan for the sustainment of the relief operations. Professor Antonio. Yes, thank you, sir. Just a uh, private sector response to what's going on in the discussions. As uh, assured, you said then the uh, Yolanda rehabilitation, that was exactly our problem then after having submitted a plan of uh, 167 billion, which was approved. Implementation took time mainly because uh, OPAR at that time did not have uh, implementing authority. We only had coordinating authority. No? Uh, and uh, we relied partly on non-government or private sector uh, help. In fact, that one achieved uh, a lot better. We, we generated close to 30 billion pesos, in, uh, in, uh, which answered for a portion of that particular rehab plan. But the majority of the plan is still was not able to be implemented until we had to both go at that time. Uh, so uh, it was a very frustrating experience at the same time, a very enlightening too. And uh, the way this one should be looked at is really, uh, as we mentioned at the start of the proceedings, uh, disasters will happen. It's happening both nat nature, natural and man-made, and we should prepare for it. And the present uh, in a organizational structure of addressing disaster management is simply uh, not effective. Uh, uh, and sustainable. Of course, uh, we address the issue of the response uh, when disaster strikes were there and then relief goods are sent. But the issue really is the rehabilitation portion and ultimately the recovery portion. No? And uh, we're talking about entire areas being devastated. The recovery process takes long. Okay? It cuts across uh, government administrations beyond six years. So therefore, if this is a reality, and it is a reality, there should be continuing uh, monitoring and uh, uh, management of the recovery process. For instance, Yolanda happened seven years or six years ago. Okay, uh, The rehab plan still has to be completed. If there was an authority that has uh, total uh, 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 authority to implement or even monitor what's going on across the number of years, then we could better observe what's going on every year. We realize this cannot be done overnight. A rehab plan cannot be done overnight. Much like my experience as a real estate developer, if we have to develop thousands of hectares, we cannot see an entire community that we envision to take place in a year, two years. It takes 10 years, 15 years, okay? Much more a total devastated area like Marawi, for instance. That will take uh, practically one generation to rehab. But there has to be continuing monitoring of the, develop, of the, the redevelopment plan. Every year, something has to happen. It cuts across all activities, the housing, the employment, the industry. When we did the... Uh, the uh, summer and late uh, coconut lands, okay? It was totally devastated. And yet when we studied the rehabilitation plan, we realized we cannot convert all the coconut lands back into coconut uh, because it would be inefficient. But that allowed us, and one of our major achievements really was we in effect uh, thought the various LGUs affected to be better equipped to plan for their future. We got USAID, we got the Development Academy of the Philippines to uh, get all the LGU planners together. They earned their master's degrees, and at the same time, they were able to have a long-term development plan for their various municipalities. And uh, right now, I think uh, a lot of them are still implementing, no? and this is long-term. And we were doing this really outside government support. We were getting this from USAID. Our monitoring team was funded by the USAID. And it was working. Now, if this can be institutionalized in an authority, maybe 
cabinet level may be not needed, but a total authority that had both implementing and uh, at the same time funding authority, then if we adopt what we in the private sector always use now, we call it the matrix organization, a project champion in this particular case, that particular secretary, will have that particular authority to at least get their, his various colleagues to toe the line just to find out how each particular region's rehabilitation plan is going. I'm not talking anymore of the response. I think response, we know what to do. Okay, with disaster preparedness, maybe a little improvement. improvement. Uh, but really, it's at the rehab side and the recovery side that needs more monitoring and centralized authority. And if this particular, uh, uh, well, the bills that uh, we're now discussing could be approved, it would be a step in the right direction. Of course, whoever will be appointed the secretary there will have a very big uh, shoes to fill, but it is something that's very necessary given what's happening to us, given that uh, in the next couple of decades we'll expect the uh, climate changes to uh, be around us with more disasters forthcoming. So coming up with this particular department would be a very crucial right step. Okay, that's the direction that we should be taking. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. One other question. Are you related to Senator De La Rosa? <laughs> Senator Tolentino. I'd, like, uh, I'd like to believe so, sir. You know, so <laughs> we're right across each other, and I think we're uh, outshining each other. So. <laughs> Chair, uh, I'd like to direct this question to DBM. Uh, DBM and probably uh, Yusek Halad can, can react. Fra from uh, multiple sources, uh, Mr. Chair, and I know that uh, Senator Zubiri is an uh, acute, acute, uh, has a business acumen. Uh, the same is true with uh, Senator Bongo. Um, multiple sources would, would define right sizing in terms of business as adapting the company to market conditions which would include increasing the workforce and rearranging upper management, quote unquote. Dito po sa mga naka, naka latag na mga panukalang batas, ililipat po doon sa bagong tatag na kagawaran ang pag-asa. Sila na yung magsasabi, yung Weather Bureau, sila na yung magsasabi kung may signal number one, signal number two, papasok ng Philippine Area of Responsibility. Ang ibig sabihin, Meron kaagad component personnel. Hindi kailangan mag-hire pa kaagad noong 700 and this is in, this is consistent with the uh, the lessons uh, sh showed to us by uh, Senator uh, Pimentel, yung French lesson na hindi kailangan na uh, bloated yung bur bureaucracy. You will have pag-asa, kususundin natin tong panukalang batas. You will have peoples. Napakagaling po ng peoples natin. Kaya under na po sa departamento ito. So you you will have uh, you sexually dumb. So, yung peoples po, may mga regional offices to. Instantly, you will have regional personnel. And you will have the Bureau of Fire Protection. Uh -huh. Ang Bureau of Fire Protection, you have 23,000 firemen. Da dahil sunog po ay uh, kalamidad po yan. At yung tinutukoy po kanina na Region 12, you will have instantly 1,036 firemen sa Region 12. So instantly, meron ka agad tao po itong mga ito. Baka po yung sinasabi na i-hire na 700 personnel, ay eh baka tatlundaan na lang po yan. You, baka hindi pa kailangan. You will have the Climate Change Commission uh, para sa planning. Ililipat natin po yun doon. Uh, tama po ba yan, uh, DBM, na hindi na kailangan gumastos? Well-trained na yung Climate Change Commission. Ililipat lang natin. Papalitan lang yung yung uh, kanilang uh, mother unit, magiging yung Department of Disaster Management, ililipat natin yung Geohazard Assessment uh, and Geo Geology Section ng MGB, ililipat po natin yung uh, uh, Disaster Response Assistance Management Bureau ng DSWD. So, so nakikita ko po, instantly, pag inilipat po lahat itong mga iba't ibang opisina ng ito, kabilang yung tinatanong ko kanina kay uh, Secretary De Losario, yung Philippine National Volunteer Service Coordinating Agency, baka 30 mil po kagad yung empleyado ng bagong tatag na kagawaran. Instantly, meron ka ng regional director, 
assistant regional director, mga bureau heads na well-trained at matagal na sa bureaucracy. Tama po ba yung DBM na hindi na tayo gagastos? Kasi 30 mil na kagad po itong ating personnel na ibibigay dito sa magpapalit na lang po ng ID, magpapalit na lamang po ng plantilya, magpapalit, ililipat na lamang po yung kanilang payroll, ililipat na lamang po yung kanilang opisina, papalta na lang po yung name tag at mayroong bagong mayroong bagong cabinet secretary na piperma ng kanilang um, ng kanilang sweldo, ng kanilang mga programa. Tama po ba yung DBM? Uh, tama ho kayo na itong kagawaran na to na i-create, hindi naman ho siya mag-start from nothing, from scratch. Kumbaga, meron ho siyang core agency, ang iniisip nga ho ng, ng DBM. Meron na hong equipment, mga fire trucks, mga opisina. Uh -huh. Niisip ho, ng, ang suggestion ho ng DBM, it would be the OCD that would be the core uh, agency that would be elevated to, uh, if ever ho, na magkikreate ho ng department. So, tama ho kayo. So, hindi na po kailangan yung 700? Ay, yung kanina kong question kasi yun ho yung... Kaya ano tama lang, po si Senator Pimentel na baka mas leaner pa ho ito kasi ni-rearrange uh -huh. lang po natin. Uh -huh. At saka depende sir yung sabi nyo na pag-asa fee box, kung ang transfer ho nila ay literally parang under lang ho sila ng uh, nung bagong department. Yusek na po doon si Sekreta, Yusek Solidum, doon sa bagong disaster Department of Disaster Management. So, uh -huh. ni Yusek ang nakagad na isa yes. na magaling pa. Actually, Yusek na din po ata siya ngayon sa DOS. Opo. So, nilipat lang siya ng, uh -huh. pinaltal lang yung kanyang ID at uh -huh. name tag. Uh -huh. So, what you're saying nga, sir, hindi siya mag-start from scratch. So, may mga existing agencies so na mai-integrate within the department. May mga regional officers na po. Kasi yung Bureau of Fire Protection, gaya po sa Region 12, sa Coronadal, Coronadal po yun, may regional office na. I-absorb na lang yung civilian personnel, bibigyan na lang ng panibagong trabaho siguro, magiging uh, clerk doon sa bagong tatak na nakagawaran sa regional office, magmumultitasking po yung iba in the transition period. So, wala po tayong initial uh, budgetary constraint na ito sa kukunin yung pera, sa magte-training pa ng personnel, they will hit the ground running, so to speak. Kasi araw-araw may sunog, pinupuntahan ni Secretary Bongo yung iba. So makikita natin, well-trained po yung mga Bureau of Fire personnel. Di po ba? Tama ma'am, galit na si Senator Tolentino. Di ma'am, tama po ba yun? So yung 700 na kailangan, hindi na kailangan. Uh, hypothetical lang. Kung baga, in-estimate lang namin, sir, whenever na tinatanong ang DBM, how much yung basic uh, funding requirements for an for a department to operate? Uh -huh. So, yung yung yung, uh, yung uh, pangamba ni Yusek Halad na ma-overwhelm sila, wala na po yun. Kasi, immediately, pwede siyang magpa-plug ceremony. Libo ka agad yung tao, Ben Cinco Mil. Pasok pa sa right sizing, hindi natin inabolish yung ibang mga ahensya, nakagawa pa tayo ng isang bagong ahensya without bloating the bureaucracy. Tama po ba yung DBM? Yes sir, kung hindi naman po tayo nagdagdag ng Hindi position, po tayo magdadag, magpapalit lang po ng nameplate. Uh -huh. Salamat po. May dadagdag lang po ako. Uh, to simplify it all, katulad ng Department of uh, Housing, used to be called HUDCC, HUDC. Ngayon, ginawa natin Department of uh, Housing. Housing, yun madaling malala. Department of Health, Health, yun kagad ang pupunta nila. Department of uh, National Defense, so Defense, yun kagad pupunta nila. Ito namang disaster, Department of Disaster, yun na kagad ang pupuntahan nila, makikipag-coordinate sila. Ngayon, ang hirap nga banggitin, NDRMMCC, hindi ko nga ma-pronounce na mabuti. Ano? MD, NDR. O nga kahit si, tanong ka dyan ng mga sampung tao dyan, hindi nga nila ma-pronounce yung NDRMC. Ngayon, Department of Disaster. Yun na lang po lalapitan natin. Yun na po makikipag-coordinate. Tama ba? O, di tama. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Sir, ilang bisis na rin lang nabanggit dito yung Marawi eh. uh, for the information of uh, this committee, the chairman of this committee at saka si uh, majority floor leader at uh, 
yung mga colleagues ko dito. Uh, during our first uh, hearing sa Marawi, we took note of uh, all their challenges, bakit uh, ganun kabagal yung rehabilitation ng Marawi. But ang pinanghahawakan ko lang talaga doon na, na statement ni Task Force sa Bangon Marawi uh, Commander. Commander ba tawag siya doon, sir? Task Force? A chairman? Di ba? Task Force. Di ba? Commander. Pag Task Force. A chairman ng Task Force. Was that uh, by uh, sir, October of 20... December of 2021, Your Honor. Okay. December of 2021, Marawi shall be fully resurrected. Ha? <laughs> huh? Uh, dapat alam niyo lahat yan, pero marami tayong, mag marami tayong magsisingil kay uh, Task Force uh, Chairman by December of 2021. Sir, di ba? Sinabi mo, uh, Marawi should have been fully resurrected. Kaya, very interested yan, sir, yung taga Mindanao. Si, marami kami dito, Senator Soberi, Senator Coco Pimentel, Senator Pacquiao, Senator Ako, at saka nga si... Senator uh, Tolentino, uh, talaga mamamaluap yan sa iyo, sir. So, sinabihan lang kita yan uh, this early. Yes, uh, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, ha? December 2021. So, in effect, you have two full years to, to do it. Uh, Mr. Senator. Matanong ko lang si, with the permission of the body, matanong ko lang si Secretary Del Rosario, yung lumalabas po sa pahayagan na, na pag-usapan di umano sa lower house, na merong, DB, DBM can confirm this, meron daw budget umano na pag hindi nagastos ngayon ay magre-revert? Ah, yun sir ang sinasabi kangina ng uh, DBM na DBM? meron 4 billion uh, for 2018 na if not accessed by December 31, it will revert back. December 31 of this year? Yes, uh, Your Honor. So, pa pag hindi po na-access yun, baka hindi ho makomply yung, yung promeso ni Secretary Del Rosario na 2021, tapos na ang... Uh, ang trabaho sa Marawi. Actually, sir, the problem is not uh, really with the uh, DBM. Uh, the sabi nga nila, is... pagpasok sa kanila, 15 days, pwede na lang uh, makuha yan. Yung approval nung uh, nakapasok sa OP. So, kaya po ba within six weeks na ma ma gumalaw po ito? Uh, actually, uh, Your Honor, naka-pre-procurement na ito. Once uh, na-release na yung uh, SARO, we can already proceed with the notice to proceed. Uh, po tayo magiging problema doon, sir. So, we are just hoping na sana within the week uh, ma mag na to ma-approve na and uh, Saro can be released as soon as possible. DBM, can that be done within this within this week daw? Para yung sinabi ni Senator De La Rosa ay eh, magkatotoo? Uh, ay, sir, we, once we receive the approval and the request, uh, we will proceed uh, in processing the request, sir. So, uh, pending the approval, eh, mukhang hindi matutuloy yung 2021. Kasi uh, mag-revert uh, itong... Uh, actually, the, the infra that would be uh, uh, conducted or implemented in the most affected area has a timetable of various timetable, and the most would be two years. Once implemented, by others will be implemented in the uh, last quarter, December of, the, of this year, and uh, most will be implemented in the first quarter of the year. Basically, 80% will be completed, uh, in less than two years. Ang ma-extend lang doon yung malalaking projects like uh, the Convention Center, uh, Your Honor. Maraming salamat. With, with the permission of this, uh, my, my other colleagues, uh, since I was given permission by Senator Luxon to temporarily, temporarily preside, there is, another, there is another bill pending before this committee, which, we, which I hope we can tackle in five minutes, uh, given that we have limited time now Uh, this is Senate Bill 1129, which I filed, the Civil Conscription Act. Basically, ganito po ito. Pag meron pong isang kalamidad, pag meron pong isang bagyo, halimbawa po yung nangyaring lindol na nakaraan, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, through the Technical Services or Administrative Division, can call upon mandatorily the services of our doctors, medical personnel, hindi na hintayin yung Department of Health, can call upon the services of our structural engineers and even hydrological engineers. Wala pong tubig sa kidapawan, walang tubig sa magsaysay. 
para po sila yung mag-duty for two weeks to one month. Ito po yung essence nitong bill nito. This is provided for under the Constitution na calling all, uh, the, the, uh, during an emergency, uh, the government may call upon the people to defend the state and in fulfillment thereof, all citizens may be required to render military or, or civil service. So, ang, ang sinasabi ko po rito, ito ay uh, ginawa na po natin nung panahon ni Presidente Quezon, merong Commonwealth Act Number no. 1, pinupropose ko po itong bill na ito with the permission of my colleagues para naman po kung meron tayong emergency gaya ng Lindol, eh hindi po tayo maghihintay ng structural engineers na manggagaling pa sa DPWH, manggagaling sa Metro Manila, na kung ilang araw pa bago makarating, o maghihintay ng mga volunteer uh, engineers para tumulong. Para day one pa lang, meron tayong uh, database, meron tayong pooling system, recruitment system, Gag gagawin natin mga kapitan yan kung makukol to active duty, at in effect, under po ng Armed Forces of the Philippines, under din po ng OCD, madali po natin ma deploy, deploy for a limited period of time. Yung sweldo po nila, kung saan sila nagtatrabaho, pribadong kumpanya, tuloy-tuloy pa huyon. Siguro may allowance ng konti, pantulog, pagkain, pero nakatulong pa sila sa taong bayan without adding recruiting on a permanent basis for OCD or the Department of Disaster Management on a permanent ba basis mga karagdagan doktor o mga engineers. So ito po yung essence ng, ng bill na ito. I'd like to hear the comments from uh, Yusek Ahalad and Secretary Del Rosario with the, the permission of my colleagues. Uh, Secretary Del Rosario. Yes, sir. Um, in mobilizing reserves, sir, uh, isang concern na nakikita natin dyan is yung uh, pasweldo ng mga reserves, especially kung uh, matagal yung kanilang mobilizations. So right Sir, now... Hindi po ito yung reservist natin na nakalista na reservist. What I'm saying is this, magsisimula po tayo ng bagong database with the, with in coordination with the Philippine Regulatory Commission, kung sino po yung mga doktor na available sa Cebu, pwedeng dalhin sa Mindanao, kung sino yung mga engineer na sa Buwanga, pwedeng dalhin sa Dabao, uh, gagawin na rin nating reservist eventually. Uh, Meron namang, itong mga different uh, departments, sir. May mga volunteers mga yan. And uh, really, it will just uh, um, uh, depend on the voluntarism uh, uh, attitude of, uh, of these volunteers. Ano? So, at nakikita naman natin yan uh, doon sa ibang uh, na, uh, sa ibang countries, like for example, Israel, they utilize uh, many volunteers na walang sweldo kapag uh, na-employ. So, we can we can do that also dito. Nabang, with the permission of the chair, Senator Laxon, kaya nabanggit ko po yan, ang dami pong gustong tumulong, kaya lang walang paraan sila, paano ba sila tutulong na yung Red Cross ni Senator Subire, Senator Gordon, yung iba naman walang access. So, kung meron po tayong pool, Alimbawa, meron tayong isang libo rin na structural engineers kahit saan pwedeng i-deploy. Meron tayong isang libong doktor kasi yung nabanggit nyo kanina, yung uh, psycho stress debriefer na mga kailangan. Dapat po yan, day one, nandun na po yan eh. Yung ating mga structural engineers. Hanggang ngayon po, nahingi pa ng structural engineer si Mayor Joseph uh, Evangelista of Kintapawan na wala naman tayo kagad maibigay dahil uh, ibahon civil engineers, structural engineers. So, Kung meron tayong yung mga gagawa ng mga tubig, yung mga, mga poso, yung, yung mga hydrological engineers, kung meron po tayong database na ganyan, gustong-gusto magservisyo hanggang 35 years old or 40 years old, so, hindi po siguro dapat hadlagan at organisado. Uh, madali, kayo na lang po yung tatawag, call to active duty or call to civil service duty, what have you. Eh, meron tayong mga taong handan tumulong. Yes, sir. Uh... But uh, mandated ito dapat sa mga different departments to uh, form their uh, parang mga volunteer groups. Like for example, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, for example, uh, we rely on them for search, rescue, and retrieval, as well as in transportation of uh, logistics, utilizing their uh, transportation assets. The DPWH, uh, we rely on them for uh, uh, yung yung assessment ng ano ng uh, struck uh, uh, damage sa uh, infrastructures as well as in the logistics portion also for the immediate clearing of uh, 
close roads and bridges. So, ganun din, uh, yung involvement ng mga volunteer groups, uh, individuals and uh, organized groups will, should be part of the preparedness of the mandated uh, departments. Uh, kasi maraming malawak yung expertise, sir. Kung ilads natin sa isang uh, ahensya lang, uh, baka kalat ang mangyayari. But anyway, what we are doing now is we have a MOA with uh, uh, PICE, uh, yung Philippine uh, Institute of uh, Civil Engineers, na yung mga members nila pwedeng i-utilize for the uh, assessment of the damage infrastructures. But uh, ang problema is yung coordination doon sa ground. Eh. We established in Kinabawan the command and control, uh, command uh, central coordinating center. So dapat yung mga needs ng mga mayors, doon niya, i, doon niya isasabihin. Hindi yung uh, sasabihin sa media or kung sino man, uh, hindi ka agad makarating yun sa amin. So all those concerns dapat doon sa CCC. And that was observed by uh, Governor, Acting Governor uh, Lala Mendoza. Noong uh, nandun kami ni Secretary uh, Lorenzana, Secretary Duque, and Secretary Anyo, maraming nagsalita, mga mayor, expressing their needs. Pero wala naman silang report na binigay doon sa uh, CCC. So doon lang namin nalalaman yung mga needs nila. So following the structures that the mechanism for coordination that we have laid out, dapat uh, doon nila sasabihin yung kanilang uh, mga concerns. Kasi Chair, kung, we just need uh, the response of Secretary De Losario and then uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honors, I think this is a very laudable uh, initiative, uh, mandatory conscription, because we really need uh, manpower whenever there is a disaster in a given area. It, it's just a matter of organizing them and with the uh, new department being capacitated with more manpower, then they can uh, reserve one unit that will uh, handle this uh, mandatory conscription, but organizing first in uh, tandem with the armed forces of the Philippines. I think this is a very uh, laudable uh, uh, bill, uh, Your Honor. Yes, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have to leave for a lunch appointment. But um, just the um, another query. I was talking about this with my dear colleague from Mindanao. Yung, for example, yung Zamboanga siege incident. Ang balita sa amin, meron pang uh, 10 cities sa Zamboanga, hindi pa daw sila bumabalik. There's about a thousand families still in the 10 city. A situation like that is exactly why we need the department. Do you have any idea if that is confirmed na may 10 city pa? May ilang libo nakatira dun sa labas na Zamboanga city? Because about the uh, middle of this year, there was a, it was a humanitarian concern kasi mga marami narinate na teenagers, na babae, dito sa mga tent city, nagkakaroon ng breakdown on, on security, I guess, for the people living there. So there's no, hindi po alam ng OCD yan, uh, ng Department of Housing, because pres presumably if it's a tent city, there was supposed to be a promise of relocation. Ito yata ang nasunog ng mga tausog yata area or na on stilts. Tapos hindi na pinabalik, and I think they're supposed to rebuild uh, housing facilities for them. Would you have any idea? We'll check on that, uh, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. It is 12 noon, and uh, we'll, with the permission of my colleagues, we'll suspend this hearing. And the next hearing, we will urge the members of the NDRRMC, especially uh, those, uh, uh, the important ones, you know, yung talaga nag implement pagka mayroong uh, rehabilitation and recovery to attend the, the hearing. So with that, the, uh, the hearing is suspended. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir.